and Michael Remus. Well, what's going on, everyone? Welcome to a packed Tuesday edition of Winnipeg Sports Talk Daily coming out of a uh, big, long weekend with lots to talk about. Um, hopefully, you all had a very happy Thanksgiving. I know Thanksgiving was... Uh, was quite a happy day for a large percentage of the Winnipeg Jets fan base with the uh, the nuke that was dropped yesterday by, uh, well, not just one, but two, by Kevin Sheveldayoff and the Winnipeg Jets announcing the dual extensions of Connor Hellebuck and Mark Shifley, seven years, $8.5 million AAV contracts each. Um, there is so much to get to today. On the program, of course, heading into tomorrow's season opener in Calgary, where the Jets will play number one of 82. Um, some great news yesterday. They got completely overshadowed by the news of the extensions of uh, Scheif and Hellebuck was that Nikolai Ehlers was a full participant in practice and has declared himself ready to play. So uh, it's time to get on with the season tomorrow. Um, but today, the majority of the conversation will revolve around the uh, massive news that broke yesterday afternoon and this morning's press conference with Shifley and Hellebuck down at Canada Life Centre. Um, welcome to everybody with us in chat. I'm sure the takes are uh, already coming in hot and heavy, um, but do want to once again thank everybody. Um, Friday was a big day for us heading into the weekend. 10,000 subscribers on our YouTube channel as we continue to grow Thank you so much for the support. And if uh, maybe you're just popping by and finding us for the first time, looking around for more news on the big signings, this is where we're at every day live, 1 o'clock p.m. on YouTube. And make sure to subscribe to Winnipeg Sports Talk on your favorite podcast feed. Uh, usually we get that pod up uh, shortly after the live show, just in time for your drive home from work and in around 3.30 or so here in the Winnipeg area. So uh, there's lots to get to today. <laughs> Um, before we do that, though, this show doesn't happen without the great support of the sponsors we uh, have uh, on board with Winnipeg Sports Talk. Have to thank our friends at Cool Bet Canada, Princess Auto, Consolidated Supply, Royal Sports, Boston Pizza, Little Brown Jug, Nick and Nicky DQ, F Apparel, Wallace and Wallace, Vita Health Fresh Market, Canadian Club, Manitoba Battery, Aqua Tech, Modern Man, and of course, we'll get to a why not question of the day. And don't forget, you've still got a week. Um, maybe less to jump on those final remaining seats for the Winnipeg Sports Talk four-game pack. Our first game is a week today when Pierre-Luc Dubois comes to Winnipeg as a Los Angeles King. All the information on our Winnipeg Sports Talk four-game pack is in the link in the description of this video. Or if you're listening to the podcast, head on over to winnipegsportstalk.com. Click on the link there, and hopefully we'll see you join an ever-growing crew of WS tiers for those four games against the Kings, the Oilers, the Leafs, and the Flames. It's going to be a great season. I think people are even more fired up to get going on the season after the big news yesterday. Michael Remus, what is going on? Man, so much to get to from the weekend. We didn't even mention that wild... Uh, bomber game Friday. Uh, one of the best games ever. What are the, regular season games? I, period. You Unbelievable. Might, you might be right. You might be right. That was incredible. Um, the Ross Atkins press conference Saturday uh, was also <laughs> incredible, but for many different reasons. Uh, NFL Sunday is always great, but yeah, I mean, I looked at my phone, uh, about to do a puzzle with my son, and I saw the uh, you know the email from the Jets saying, "Hey, uh, these guys signed seven year extensions." Uh, I did not think both of them uh, was possible. You know, we've been talking all summer, pretty much how one of them was likely gone. Um, it was 
I mean, a great move. I thought it was, look, they if they want to compete, they want to contend. I don't think they had any direct replacements for those guys. So uh, for the short-term future, I think this is a, a great move and great move for this season as we look ahead. Uh, we talked about it a lot on the stream before. Check it on our channel. But it was, I think, very exciting day for the Jets. And I think it made a statement uh, to the locker room, to the league, that uh, this team is certainly committed to winning. Well, you know, first and foremost, we'll get into the, uh, you know, the the, the nuances of um, everything. But first things first, I think we as Winnipeggers and, you know, as Jet fans and whatnot can finally tell people to stick it when we get the old, tired, everybody wants out of Winnipeg, nobody wants to play there, everybody's gone narrative. Um, that I think we can shut the door on. And I think there was enough evidence over the course, the life of this franchise in 2.0, that that wasn't the case. But certainly not coming out of here necessarily, but out of Toronto and other places, there was just an assumption that all this was going to, you know, end with players playing well for a while and then going to greener pastures. Um, it's very clear that, you know, after the offseason that saw the Winnipeg Jets engaged in NHL teams in trade discussions for both of the players, um, that maybe the grass wasn't greener. Um and both of these men have, you know, now signed up to be Winnipeg Jets, likely for the remainder of their career. And we'll hear from the guys in a minute. Um, I, I mean, I'll be honest, and, and Reem, I know there's been a lot of reaction to talk about the video that I recorded, just to, to, to take people behind the curtain. Like, I was on a bus back with a bunch of Vikings and Chiefs fans from Minneapolis when this happened. And I got a call from a nearly hyperventilating Michael Remus on the bus that this had broken. First of all, I had to make sure that he wasn't screwing with me. Then once it became very clear that this was in fact true, um, you know, just had you know, had to, you know, obviously we weren't able to uh, do a pop-up show because of the uh, situation that I was in. So yes, ran into the uh, the Target store, found a nice quiet spot of the produce department to throw that one out. and. You know, I think we're over 30,000 views for that video on Twitter right now. I'm not sure about the other, uh, about the, uh, the other uh, like TikTok and Instagram or not. But listen, everyone is talking about this. And uh, it took me a minute to wrap my head around it. Um, first and foremost, I mean, to get Hellebuck done for seven years at 8.5, I think is, I mean, far beyond what I thought was possible, to be honest. And that and that was even if he was willing to stay here. And we'd heard so much uh, reported by very respectable people that I believe the quote was, that ship has sailed. Well, it sailed and it came back to the boat. It came back to the dock. And Connor Hellebuck is going to be a Winnipeg Jet. The Mark Scheifele one is fascinating as well. Um, I, I, I did not think that the organization at the time, and listen, things have obviously changed at the beginning of the summer, that they were thinking about going down this road. But as I think the off season played out, you had a situation that became very apparent that, you know, there might be the willingness for the Winnipeg Jets and Mark to, to, uh, to get together, you know, and discuss an extension. But what to me is so fascinating, Remus, and so noteworthy for so many reasons is that these guys did it together and did identical deals, both in length and in term. Um, Th that to me was simply shocking. And uh, listen, as I said yesterday in the video, I got to give a ton of credit to Kevin Sheveldayoff. And I know Larry Simmons, I believe, is a big part of that negotiating crew to, to not only get it done, but to bring them together like that. The message it sends to the fan base, the message it sends to the players in that dressing room, it backs up everything that they have been saying that, you know, they're intending on being a competitive team. They're planning to win. Um, and it certainly does sort of chart the course for this club over the course of the next five to seven years. So um, I, 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 I'm still somewhat stunned, as I'm sure many of you are, but I really do think that this is a good thing for the Winnipeg Jets. And um, listen, if you ask me which one I like more, I mean, listen, I think it's pretty clear. I like the Hellebuck one more, but I'm also very interested to see, and we'll talk about this with Mike and with Jeff, about what this does to Mark Shifley's situation. Because, now listen, he's got some defensive liabilities, absolutely. He's also been an incredibly productive player. Point a game pretty much every year, 42 goals last season. But I think there was some real question as to whether he wanted to be here, whether he was committed to this situation. And I think there was also a lot of, you know, talk about, you know, how he had been 
quote unquote underpaid on his previous contract uh, and what that would do to negotiations going forward here or elsewhere. Um, the way that it all came together is fascinating. We will look back at yesterday and this Thanksgiving Day weekend for a long time in Winnipeg Jet history. Um, and certainly right now going into the season, um, my take is that this is really good news. And, um, you know, you'll hope that this will kind of, you know, push Mark on a on a path to, you know, being all in on everything the team can do. He's got his money right now, and now it's time to both earn it and uh, help this team take the next step forward to continuing to compete for uh, playoffs, winning series, and eventually, as Connor Hellebuck said, the lone goal is winning a championship. Yes, season starts today, and and one thing that we had been talking about is, okay, what's going to happen at the trade deadline if, you know, they're kind of on the fringe of the playoffs? Are they going to be buying? Are they going to be selling these guys? And I think we can say now that if the Winnipeg Jets are, you know, in contention, they're going to look to add pieces, maybe trade away uh, futures. We'll have to see because they're not going to be trading either of these guys. And I think the you know, the number one comment when we posted this uh, on our social medias was, wait, is this real? Is this a joke? I mean, everyone... <laughs> You thought it could, because I don't think anyone really saw this happening. Both of them staying long term. I thought it was kind of one or the other. Like during, um, we talked about similarities with Bufflin and Ladd, where Ladd got traded and Bufflin re signed. But both these guys, identical seven year, $8.5 million deals and salary cap. It was probably going up through the life of this deal. So it's going to be, you know, a lower percentage of the cap than it is now. But look, if the Jets. They're saying, hey, we want to contend. We're not going to tank. And if you lo did lose a guy like Mark Shafley, who's coming in at first line center? Who's going to score, you know, 40 goals for you um, for a goalie? I mean, who's replacing Connor Hellbuck? They really didn't have a direct replacement unless you thought it was going to be Lauren Brossois, you know, if he could stay healthy, uh, healthy for a year. But uh, I think this definitely solidifies the team going forward. And as I said before, signals the team that they're you know serious about winning signals to the league that hey you know Winnipeg's a place where you can come and, and stay here long term uh, and I think for the fans I think a lot of people here are certainly uh, excited about the signings I think there's you know some trepidation for you know, the last couple of years but uh, we're living in the now us uh, and I think for this season the next couple um, the Jets are going to continue to uh, contend you know to be in the playoffs and, and have a competitive team. Well, I mean, listen, for everyone that said, well, I don't mind the deals, but I'd like them to be shorter. Folks, I, I, I'm stunned that they weren't eight. I mean, to get these players mm -hmm. yeah. at that at that deal, I mean, I mean, that's the cost of doing business in, in the National Hockey League. And, you know, you, you know, you, you don't just say exactly what you would like and write that out and then players do it. I mean, they're looking for their long term security. And, you know, as we'll hear from a minute to hear both of those players talk about being Jets for life. I think, you know, really does, you know, in, invigorate a fan base that, you know, it's sort of been spending a long time just wondering what the future was going to hold. Um, you know, listen, I, let me say this uh, before we bring on, uh, we, we listen to a couple of these clips from, uh, from Shifley and, and, uh, and, uh, and Connor. Um, you know, over the last couple of years, I mean, I've been quite critical at times about Mark Shifley, especially the way the seasons have ended the last couple of years. I mean, remember what he said two years ago, I'm going to have to think about my future and what's that's best for me. I think we all took that um, correctly as a player that was wondering what his future was. And that was certainly far from, hey, I want to be part of this and I want to be here for life. And I mean, things at the end of last season with Rick Bonus um, and, and Chifley did not go well. And of course, we remember how the season ended. Everybody knows what Mark is capable of. I think the huge questions about Mark was, did he want to be here? Was he committed to being a Jet long-term going forward? And, you know, for a lot of people, myself included, we all heard about Adam Oates and the Adam Oates influence about, you know, going out and getting your deal done. Well, now that it's done, what does this do to Mark Shifley? All the questions about whether you were underpaid before or not, I mean, have to be in the rearview mirror. It's a clear commitment to being the guy here with the Winnipeg Jets. And, you know, now that the money is taken care of, there's only one thing to do, and that is go out and be the best player that he can be and help this team win hockey games. And um, I think certainly the tone of Mark, you know, we heard from, we'll hear in a minute from the press conference, was different than the last couple of years. And I'll say this, um, I'm pretty sure that there were 
uh, some differing opinions inside the Winnipeg Jet front office about the future of Mark with Winnipeg based on what happened in the last couple of years. And I think there were plenty of discussions over the course of this summer. And I, I don't think it can be overstated what buying out Blake Wheeler and having Blake move on to another organization and the, the gap that that filled, the, uh, the, the chasm that that maybe filled in the locker room and Mark Shifley's spot in that um, does to where he's at right now. There's a new captain. It's Adam Lowry. They know each other very, very well. Josh Morrissey, of course. They're very, very close friends. Mark, of course, is going to be wearing an A. Now that this contract is signed, he and Connor Hellebuck have committed and made the statement that they're committing to Winnipeg, the Winnipeg Jets, this fan base, for likely the rest of their career. Uh, it, it sets a very clear path going forward. I don't think Mark's going to turn into the second coming of Steve Eiserman, who completely changed his game and turned into one of the best two-way players in addition to an offensive dynamo and one of the best captains in the NHL. But I'm certainly hopeful that this maybe pushes him more to a guy that, you know, can be a little bit more in a, a part of things other than scoring goals. Um, but I'll tell you what, the messaging from the team and the messaging from the players an absolute breath of fresh air. And uh, listen, everybody knows my thoughts on Connor Hellebuck. I, I still can't believe they got him for the money that they did and a seven-year deal and not an eight-year deal. I got full confidence that this guy is going to be the backbone of this franchise for the majority, if not all, of this contract right now. And uh, Remo, I got to tell you, it is an exciting time. Um, it is an exciting time for the Winnipeg Jets, and it certainly changes all the narratives and conversation about this team that I think we're going to be a big part of this Jets season um, now before they even drop the puck on game number one tomorrow night in Calgary. Oh, yeah, you'd be hearing it all season. You know, what's going to happen to these guys? You know, when do the first trade bait boards come out, Hus, that you know what Hellbuck and Shafley would be one and two? We're not going to have to deal with any of that. I think for the team, you don't have the questions and you know that everyone is focused on winning on this season. And I don't know if it affected them last year with the Dubois thing, but like, was it a, a big coincidence that after they went to Montreal and uh, they had the big Dubois press conference with the, with the charity that he had there, like <laughs> they kind of went downhill. I'm sure it was a complete, complete coincidence, Hus, but that road trip, I mean, that was a key turning point uh, with the team last season where, you know, they had Dubois addressing the Montreal media and, doing his his charity and big charity press conference announcement then and again you don't have any of the questions um you know they're just just playing in it and I did mention yeah the deals are long but you look at evolving hockey he's very good at contract models um they had they tweeted out seven years they had extensions for Hellebuck and Shifley at 9.2 and 8.9 respectively and it felt strongly about an eight-year contract which you said you were surprised it wasn't eight an AAV of 8.8 and 8.4. So, you know, they're pretty much right on the money. Uh, the Jets are getting them for slightly less. And you know, the numbers we had heard, Hellbuck looking around for, uh, what, you know, 10 or something, and Shifley looking for a raise on his current contract. You know, I had floated out. Uh, I floated out Nazem Kadri as comparable, and Shifley did get more, uh, more than Kadri got from the Flames. But I think, look, I think these guys – have this relationship with the team. They're able to buy in and um, commit to each other. So um, crazy to think that they're going to be Jets uh, 2.0 for life because that doesn't really happen that often. No, it, it, it doesn't. And, I mean, you know, you bring up Dubois. And, again, we'll, we'll save our welcomes for Dubois for next Tuesday for a game one of uh, the uh, the WST four-pack with the Jets. And uh, <laughs> I'm sure everyone will be uh, ready to welcome Pierre back and uh, – um, you know, uh, hopefully see the home team win in that game. Um, but I'll say this, at the end of last season, I think when many of us were sort of bent about, you know, the entire Dubois drama and the ordeal, although it certainly was good for business on the show, there's no doubt about that. Um, and listen, the way things had ended the last two seasons with Mark, I mean, I'd said, listen, the one thing that I think we as a fan base want is guys that are committed to Winnipeg and want to be here and aren't there, aren't feeling like they're doing us a favor by being. And listen, I think Blake gave that vibe out at times. Um, we heard two guys today, and we'll get to that in just a second, that 
certainly made a statement that they are happy, proud to be Winnipeg Jets and are looking forward to doing some great things in the future. And uh, as I say, that certainly changes a lot of the thoughts. And I mean, listen, it is a great message to every other guy in that locker room. The two of their most important players are buying in and are here for the long haul. Uh, Mike's going to join us coming up in just a few minutes, but uh, why don't we, uh, why don't we listen to the opening statement from the two players, Remo? Let's do three and four. I mean, we can maybe get to Chevy and Bones afterwards, but Mike's going to jump on in a couple minutes. Here's the opening statement from Mark Shifley from earlier today at Canada Life Center after officially signing his seven-year extension with the Winnipeg Jets. Yeah, I'm just, uh, you know, I'm very honored, you know, first and foremost, I'm very honored and, and uh, you know, can't thank the organization, you know, Mark Chipman, Chevy, um, Bones for, for trusting in me as a, as a player and, um, you know, obviously I was drafted here. I actually, my mom reminded me that I signed the deal on the eve of my first NHL game. So, um, or not on the eve, on the actual day. So, uh, you know, it's crazy how, uh, that's pretty wild. <laughs> <laughs> So, you know, it's pretty wild how, how things happen. And, um, you know, there's nothing I want more uh, in this world than to, to win a Stanley Cup for the Winnipeg Jets and, and to do it alongside Heli, um, you know, to, to get this whole process done, uh, you know, with the, with the likes of, a, you know, a Vesna, a Vesna goalie um, like Connor. And, um, you know, can't think of a, a more hardworking, you know, dialed in, you know, athlete in our game. And, uh, you know, I'm lucky to, to be sitting beside him here today. And, um, you know, just can't thank, thank the fans. Can't can't thank you know my family um, enough. I uh, you know I'm, I'm tremendously honored and just very excited to, to get the season going. All right, so there's Mark Shifley. Um, and by the way, uh, listen, thank you, Ticona Paul, for the five dollars super chat towards the BA split bet. Very shortly after doing that video, I DM or I, I tweeted BA, congratulations. I'm no longer undefeated with bets with people in the chat. My streak of uh, winning Ryan Friesen bets is over. BA, I will be sending that to you because, uh, listen, I mean, I was very clear at the beginning of the season. I didn't think that Mark Scheifele would be a Jet at, the, at this time, and I didn't think his extension would happen. And now, obviously, some things have changed. And I think this kind of goes back to my point about where things happened at the end of last year. I think after Blake was gone, I think there's been probably a little bit of soul-searching on both sides. And obviously, plenty of conversations behind the scenes to give the Winnipeg Jets the confidence to uh, to do this deal deal with Mark. And uh, hey, we'll see how it all plays out. Um, but it certainly seems like the team, the organization, is in a good place about it. And as we just heard from Mark, excited to to be here moving forward, knowing what the goal is now that he's secured his probably final long term contract as a National Hockey Leaguer. Hellebuck did the same thing for the exact same amount. We'll kind of get to what message that sends to everyone as well. But here's what Connor Hellebuck had to say with his first statement after signing his contract. Yeah, I would definitely like to thank the organization, Chevy, Chip, Coach, Greg, um, Wade Flaherty. I mean, so many guys to, to thank. Mark, you're a big part of, I mean, the guy I am today. Um, You've definitely paved the way for me and a lot of players in this organization to to do what's right. And um, when you're sitting back and you're gathering all the information you possibly can, and you look around the league, you don't get a team that is as dialed as we are. And I think that leads with you, Mark. So thank you for being the player you are, and thanks organization for believing me. And um, I think that was the most important aspect when I when I really looked at it is. This organization believes in me the way I believe in myself. And that's kind of the, the way I've gotten to where I am now. And it's really hard to leave that. That that breeds success. And I want to thank you guys a lot for believing in me the way I believe in myself. And, and now I'm ready to be a Jet for life and bring a cup to the city because I truly believe that we can get it done here. <laughs> you know, man, that puts a smile on my face. I mean, he... Uh... He has been, and I maintain, he's the best player on this hockey club, and everything changes if Connor Hellebuck isn't here. And Remus, to hear him say he's fired up and excited to be a Jet for life is something I had hoped we would hear. I wasn't particularly confident we would hear, but we just heard it. Yeah, and they put out a great uh, great picture of him with his two kids and a what number seven balloon on the Winnipeg Jets. Social oh, media. his wife's Andrea. That that might be 
I, I, I didn't mention this to you, but I saw that come across the gram and I thought that might be the coolest piece of social media from a family member, a partner, a spouse of a Winnipeg Jet um, that I can remember, um, you know, uh, celebrating. There it is, Connor with his uh, his two children, the congrats data with the seven behind, and, uh, and of course the dog too. Um, can't remember what his dog's name is, but uh, we'll be seeing him on that mask all season long, uh, and a big, big day in the uh, in the Hellebuck household. And um, listen, he is the backbone of this franchise, and to have him here going forward um, at what I, I maintain is. Listen, I know it's a lot of money, but when you think about what he's done for the Winnipeg Jets, um, I was expecting it to be more. I said that I would have been fine with doing more. I would have been fine with the eighth year. I thought he was that important. And uh, as I say, I think Chevy and the, the crew that negotiated these deals did such a great job. And it cannot be overstated, Remus, watching those guys together. I had no idea about you know the relationship from some of the other players you see a lot more. You don't see it as much between a goaltender and the guys. But to see those guys together and the fact that Hellebuck didn't hold out for more, try to be the highest paid guy, I think it sends an amazing message to eh, the fan base, but also to every single guy in that locker room, as well as young players that will be joining the organization and the active roster in the years to come. It's kind of funny. The Jets um, put this out. Shifley and Hellbuck established 2015. It's just pictures of them, I don't know, after the game. And, and maybe they're, and I was looking for pictures for the thumbnails, you know, for what, for Instagram, for this uh, show on YouTube. And there's just so many of these guys after the game with the embrace. And they obviously do have that close relationship. You heard that there. I mean, you don't have it too often where two guys who are pending UFAs uh, sign identical deals, and I'm sure that they talked about their futures together as much as, you know, they say, oh, I haven't thought about it. I leave it up to my to my agent. I'm sure they talked about it and, uh, <laughs> and said, you know, we believe in, in Winnipeg. We believe in the organization, and they're pumped to be uh, Winnipeg Jets uh, for life. I mean, that's, that's pretty it's pretty cool. Huh? So, you know, again, you don't see that often, and um, I'm looking forward to seeing, you know, what happens here. Uh, going forward, the next you know four or five years with this uh, with this group here. Yeah, no doubt about it. I mean, we've seen a couple times. I mean, obviously Kane and Taves uh, signing those mm -hmm. identical detail uh, deals to keep them in Chicago for eight years. Uh, you know, some people bring up the Suter and Parise deals in Minnesota. Those are both UFA deals, and those are also twelve years, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> so, um, uh, listen, I'm, I'm glad they're not twelve year deals. Obviously, that's impossible right now. Um, but there's a lot to it, and 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 probably the most incredible and fascinating thing about this that I'm not sure we'll ever really know, although I hope we do, is how those negotiations came together. I mean, they had different agents, um, so to to get everybody on the same page to bang it out at the exact same number um, is uh, is certainly noteworthy and uh, probably maybe the most interesting part of this uh, this entire ordeal. Mike McIntyre is going to jump on right away. Jeff Hamilton later on. Mike Kelly from the NHL Network. Just before we bring in Mike, uh, thank you, Ezzy, for the comment on my haircut in uh, in chat. Uh, yes, I did pop by and see our friends Modern Man last week. And, guys, if you need to get uh, haircuts or more, get on down to one of Man uh, Modern Man Barber's eight locations in Winnipeg, including the newest locations on Pemina Highway and over on Plessy Road. Modern Man's got you covered with haircuts, beard shaping, shaves, color services, and more. You can book your look and make an appointment at modernmanbarber.com and give them a follow on Instagram at modernmanbarbershops. Pretty nice outside. Pool season's over, though. If you're thinking about a pool for next year, you know Aquatech are the experts and can get you working on that right now with financing options as well. But you might not know that whole home renovations start with Aquatech. Thousands of rentals is their foundation. Aquatech can upgrade any space in your home. If you're ready to enhance your kitchen, your bathroom, or even add a man cave to your home, visit aqua-tech.ca to learn more about their whole home renovations, including financing options. Well, we know who the battery is going to be for the Winnipeg Jets for the next seven years, or eight years, I guess, considering these are extensions that kick in next year. Manitoba Battery's been the engine of good times for the summer for Winnipeggers and Manitobans, and now it's time to get real. The season's here, and the winter is just around the corner. Are you prepared for your car and truck to handle that Winnipeg winter? 
Well, you can find out by going by for a free battery test at Manitoba Battery uh, over on Logan Avenue. Uh, but the bottom line is Manitoba Battery has the best prices in town on batteries for your car and truck for the winter. And even better than getting the best price and shopping local, they'll deliver it to you for free anywhere in the city of Winnipeg with a any purchase of 60 bucks or more. It's that easy. Head on over, check out everything they've got on at manitobabattery.com. You can give them a call at 783-8787. And uh, pop by and see Donnie's great staff as well if you're in the neighborhood at 1026 Logan Avenue. And uh, hey, our friends at Canadian Club, I think there was a few cheers last night at some Thanksgiving dinners amongst Jets fans with the big news yesterday. Of course, uh, a big cheers was laid out late night on Friday for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers after that epic win over the BC Lions to all but clinch the West Again, this season, of course, Canada's favorite Canadian Whiskey Canadian Club is also the official spirit of the Winnipeg Blue Bombers and WST. Pick it up at your local Manitoba Liquor Marts. And don't forget, CC and Ginger, available in 473 milliliter cans. You can pick those up at your local beer store as well. All right, let's uh, let's get down to Canada Life Centre and welcome in Mike McIntyre from the Winnipeg Free Press. Mike, my head is still spinning from the big news yesterday. Uh Take us back to yesterday afternoon. Where were you and what uh, what was your initial reaction when you got the alert or the press release or how, how did you find out and what uh, <laughs> what was your immediate reaction? We had uh, we had heard some rumblings uh, yesterday morning that uh, that there could be some big news coming. Um, the, the release goes out, uh, whatever, mid-afternoon. Um, you know, I think, Haas, you and I, we've talked about this a few times in the past, that the longer this dragged on and when nothing happened during the summer, that perhaps it was starting to become a possibility that one or maybe both players um, could be signed long-term. Um, I think we all uh, accepted that, that getting Connor Hellebuck locked up long term would have been high on the Jets priority list. We weren't quite as certain maybe about Mark Shifley and the thought that perhaps everybody thought, you know, maybe a change of scenery would be beneficial. But, you know, I think as time went on here uh, and certainly with the season now about to begin and everybody was saying, look, this wasn't going to be a distraction. Um, but the fact of the matter is it was going to be something that would kind of hover over this team. So, with that in mind, um, you know, maybe an artificial deadline and a little bit of urgency to sit down and see where this is at. Um, and one thing we know about this organization, Huss, um, is that it's a very loyal organization and it rewards those that are loyal to it. Uh, Mark Shifley and Connor Hellebuck would certainly fall into that category. And I think we can't understate the importance that Mark Shifley was the very first draft pick of the 2.0 era and I think there's some real um you know th there's some tradition in there there's some some history and I think that is very important to the organization and when you hear Mark Shifley talk even at exit day last year about his idol Stevie Eiserman who played his whole career with one team you know I think that opened the door a little bit that hey maybe this is something that actually is important to Mark Shifley uh, that, all that being said, for sure there was some surprise, especially the way this happened, Huss, simultaneously and exactly to the dollar. Like this is almost Sedin twin level that those guys used to be joined at the hip uh, with their contracts. Um, you know. I oh, did we just uh, lose Mike? Yeah, he's, in the, he's Mike. in the red. Yeah, we lost him. We got we got him in the red. We'll uh, we'll <laughs> we'll get Mike back, and you know that that is part of it. And you know I'm interested to hear what M Mike has to say about that. Uh, Mike, sorry, we just lost you there for a minute. The uh, the internet crapped out. Um, you were just get you were just getting to the point. Uh, you know we were talking about the significance of the fact that these are identical deals, same term, same AAV, and you know you compared them to Sedin's. We talked about the Taves and Kane right. deals earlier in Chicago. Um, the significance of that, what it says both to the fan base, to the rest of the hockey world, and the players, both present and future, of the Winnipeg Jets. Oh, we had him. He's in the green, and then we just lost him again. 
I don't know what's up. He's in the bunker right now, I guess today. The uh, the Wi-Fi uh, maybe not quite as good in the uh, in the downstairs downstairs area right now. Well, listen, while we get Mike, let me fire out the why not question of the day for everyone. And I think it's pretty obvious what this question is today. Jet fans, how are you feeling today about the uh, the massive announcement yesterday of the dual extensions for Connor Ellibuck and Mark Shifley? I would say that from the reaction to the video that I put out yesterday, uh, it probably would be, well, I would say it's overwhelmingly pos- positive for a number of reasons, um, but certainly it's not unanimous. Let us know in the chat for the why not question of the day for our friends at Not Autocorp over at Waverly and McGilvery. All right, Mike, we got you back. Back to the significance of the uh, the yeah. twin deals. Yeah, sorry, uh, some connect. We're actually at the Hockey for All Center here, and the uh, Wi-Fi can be a little spotty. I'm going off the phone now, so hopefully a little bit better connection. Um, yeah, you know, it brought to mind like the Sedins. You just don't see this happen. And it'd be one thing if they had the same agents, but they don't. And you can only imagine kind of the stick handling that would have been involved here. I asked Kevin Shoveldayoff about that at the scrum here this afternoon. And, you know, he said that there was a lot of transparency and obviously a lot of trust involved in the process just to make this work for us. Um, you know, that there would have been a lot more than usual kind of letting the other party know what was happening. Uh, and you can see why, because these deals were, you know, understandably kind of tied together. Um, so the fact that this happened the way it did, um, you know, I think the message is loud and clear. True North Hustler just spent $119 million, $119 million commitment to these two players. Um, you know, I think there's a very clear message that they're sending, you know, to the players, obviously, um, and to the fan base that, uh, this is this is an organization they're going to spend. We can expect they're going to continue to spend to very near the salary cap ceiling, even as it grows in in coming years, as many expect it will, and that they are determined to not sort of go on the cheap and and try and you know scrimp together a roster that maybe can contend. That they are serious about trying to win. You can debate whether. They're going about it the right, whether the, the players, if you will, that they have are, are the right players for that. But I don't think you can debate the intention of the message that's being sent from the top down. It, it's loud and clear. And, uh, uh, you know, what happened yesterday is just the, the latest and perhaps the most pronounced example of that that we've seen. Yeah, I know. There's a, there's no doubt about it. Um, You know, to me, these were very different situations throughout the offseason. And God knows we had enough conversations about it. I mean, I was of the opinion that the Winnipeg Jets would have been more than happy to ink this deal with Connor Hallibuck. And frankly, I'm still surprised that it wasn't more um, at any point in the offseason. I did not get that feeling with Mark Shifley. And in fact, we've been talking to folks. It didn't sound like there were really any contract discussions for most of the summer. Um, I think it's important to note the, the changing of the guard of this club with Blake Wheeler leaving, with Adam Lowry becoming the captain. But I also think that there was probably some long, very interesting discussions between Mark, management, ownership, obviously his agent as well. In your opinion, what's happened behind the scenes that we haven't seen that's taken us from where things appeared to be going into the offseason to this day today with Mark getting a seven-year extension in all likelihood being, as he mentioned, a jet for life? Well, the fact that they're willing to to invest another $59.5 million in their first ever draft pick, Mark Shifley, that, that should tell you right there that they are fully confident, Haas, that that is a sound investment, that the Mark Shifley that they're going to get um, is one that gives them a chance to succeed, to win the Stanley Cup, which is the ultimate goal here. There's no way they would have spent that money if they felt like that wasn't what they were going to get. And so you do wonder, you know, behind the scenes, we're not privy, obviously, to the conversations that are had, but I'm sure there was some fact finding, some soul searching um, that went on. And, you know, clearly there is a strong belief in Mark Shifley, the hockey player, Mark Shifley, the human being, um, that, that he is someone they want to build around. And, you know, let's not forget last year, and there was a lot of criticism of Mark Shifley last year, he still had a career high 42 goals. Um, you know, I asked uh, Rick Bonus and others today, how do you think these deals are going to age? 
Rick Bonus said he believes Mark Scheifele's best hockey is still in front of him, that this is a player just in the prime of his career and that prime isn't ending anytime soon. Um, does that mean Mark Scheifele becomes a, a more complete kind of 200-foot player? I think at this point at age 30, he probably is what he is. Um, but the Jets clearly are comfortable with, with what he is at this point. And you do wonder, Huss, and maybe we'll never hear the full answer to this or get the full story, but you wonder if that changing of the guard and Blake Wheeler no longer being here and Adam Lowry now the captain, um, if, if, you know, and, and look, people mature as they age, um, circumstances mature people as well. I think what the Jets sort of had happened last year uh, probably opened some eyes. Um, and so, you know, I think this summer was all about kind of resetting things and, and a fresh start and a clean slate. Um, and I think the fact that they are investing this kind of money in Mark Shifley, that they made him the offer that they did, tells you, um, regardless of maybe the, any outside noise and what, uh, what us in the media or fans might think, uh, they have every confidence that the guy that was their first ever draft pick, and as I said earlier, I think that really means something to this organization. You know, there's a statue of Dale Howarchuk outside um, the building, and and we know how this organization uh, honors alumni and what it means to guys that have kind of, you know, put their blood, sweat, and tears into the organization. Mark Scheifele, he's been here from the from the get go, and I think the chance to have him here for his entire career. Um, meant something to True North and, and obviously meant something to Mark Shifley as well. well. Listen, for sure. And I mean, it's nice and it's a nice story, but I mean, you're not making those decisions just no. because of that. No. Um, I, I don't think there was any questions about Hellebach. You know exactly. Everyone knows. All you need to do is ask him a question. He'll give you exactly what he's saying. Um, and you know, he's believed that he will be a Stanley Cup champion. He basically said as much. I will win the Stanley Cup. I love the yes. confidence. Um and now it looks like if that's going to happen, it's going to be here in Winnipeg. Um, the thing that's so interesting about Shifley is that, I mean, I really do believe that even within the Winnipeg Jets, there were some differing opinions on what the best way to go forward was with Mark. And, and let's face it, a very, very important asset. I didn't think that they were even close to being there the way the last couple seasons ended. And, I mean, to me, like, obviously, there's a sales pitch from the team to get a player ink to a contract like the one that Mark just signed earlier today or yesterday. But I'm also of the opinion that I think that there was maybe from the other side, I have to be a bit of a sales pitch that, you know, some of the things that had happened, um, you know, in the past were, I don't know, whatever you want to call them, growing pains to get up to here. Yeah. I mean, listen, we've heard so much about Mark's contract and the one that he signed that he was clearly for the majority of that, of that term um, exceeding, and many people thought that, you know, a lot of the things that were all about points, the lack of attention to defense was maybe people being in his ear or whatever about getting that next deal. Like, I have to think that there's been something that's happened with the conversations, many of them over the offseason, that, you know, Mark is not only committed to being here and being a Winnipeg Jet, but everything else is done. Now it's time to go out and win hockey games and earn the money and um, something has changed, I think, amongst the uh, you know the important decision makers there that have gotten to this point that they have the confidence that this is the right thing to do for the long term future of the franchise. Well, and and that segues into uh, something I was going to mention that uh, you know here he didn't speak today um, in front of the scrum or anything, but he was certainly present here, uh, and that's the the guy that signs the checks. The buck stops with with Mark Shipman and. Uh, my colleague Kenny Weeb has he had a a one-on-one -on -one chat with uh, with Mark Chipman um, while the scrums were going on, and Kenny will be writing uh, on some of the very interesting things that Mark Chipman had to say to him today about Mark Shifley, especially and Connor Hellebuck. Um, but I, I think when you talk about you know where these decisions lie and and what goes into them, I, I think you can't look beyond Mark Chipman and that that he probably played a very significant role in everything that went down here. I mean, we know he did. He's signing the checks, right, ultimately, um, you know, him and David Thompson. But, you know, this is a decision that I don't think they took lightly. It's not like they rushed into this. Uh, but at the end, it does sound like 
the way this came together was fairly quickly and that it was only in the last couple of weeks that they kind of got down to the brass tacks as the saying goes and you know really started to hammer out the details what would be fascinating to know Huss, and we'll probably never know this how close did the jets potentially come to going in a very different direction with one or both of these players um we know there was certainly tires being kicked over the summer when it comes to potential trades there was a lot of trade rumors and there was a belief that uh, these guys had probably at least in mark shifley's case especially um, had maybe played his last game after the way last season ended. Uh, so, you know, I wonder, <laughs> it would be fascinating to know just how close maybe the trigger came to being pulled on on something very different. Um, or did it ever go very far down that road? Um, you know, Kevin Chevalier off today, he wouldn't say, and obviously he's not going to reveal that information publicly. Um, but, you know, I think a lot of people expected a very different outcome. And as you say now, Huss, the... The here and now is that uh, these guys are long-term Jets. They're probably Jets for life. Um, they are very important parts of the, the core in the present and obviously in the future. They're pieces that the team will build around. And I think the message here is um, it doesn't end with these guys. That They're going to keep building around these guys because you're not investing this kind of capital with the idea of just trying to squeak into the wild card every year and maybe – luck goes your way like they are obviously in it to win it and it'll be really interesting to see especially as the cap goes up in future years you know what else they try and do around around this team all the talk about potential rebuild uh, that's clearly not happening and so here we are got the cast of thousands here behind me the fan <laughs> club us uh you're gonna have to send them My all gang. royalty they all want royalty checks that's a lot of checks you're gonna have to cut for those cameos. Um, but, you know, it, it certainly sets the stage. <laughs> we, we thought this was going to be a very interesting season, I think, for a, a specific reason. And that is, you know, we all thought, okay, how they start may ultimately dictate which direction they go. Well, we now know the direction, and they haven't played a single minute of the season. Um, but now the season takes on a very a, another very interesting aspect because I think there's even more pressure um, to compete and to win and to be successful. And so forget about any talk of potential selling at the trade deadline. Us, um, obviously the Jets would love to be in a position where they can be buying and, you know, really making an aggressive run for it as early as this season. Well, uh, Mike McIntyre from the Winnipeg Free Press with his live on Winnipeg Sports Talk from the Hockey for All Center following the uh, big press conference today announcing the dual signings of Shifley and, uh, and Hellebuck. You know, just back to your point about what did or didn't happen this offseason. Um, one, one of the things that I think came out probably for both of these players is that, you know, maybe what was thought to be out there might not have been, um, might not have been what was expected. Um, specifically to Shifley. I mean, you know, we talked to a ton of folks at the draft. I mean, all of the insiders now let's face it. Most of the insiders didn't have this stuff either. So take it for what it's worth. Um, but if there wasn't a big trade market for Mark, um, you know, I think that probably resonated, you know, probably with him a little bit too. And I mean, sure. if Connor Hellebuck, you know, was talking to other teams about, you know, looking at an extension that was eight figures and that wasn't there, um, you know, I think that resonates a little bit too. And, you know, obviously you bring these guys in on multi on the, on the same deals on the same term. I mean, I think there's the potential that these guys go out and play with, um, you know, now that everything is done, remembering everything that happened, how they got here, maybe with a little bit of a chip on their shoulder. And and, and listen, Mark probably doesn't have to really prove anything to anyone. I mean, we know right. what he's done over the course of his career. But again, what is going to be, what will determine, I guess, the um, the legacy is what these players are able to do with it and what the team is going to be able to going forward. So, I mean, as much as we can talk about the message that it sends to to everybody, um, the fact that we're not going to be talking about this at all this season is entirely yeah. put into bed, I think, is a real positive for everybody involved with the club. But I, I, do you have any thoughts on what this does to the Winnipeg Jets this year? Even though these deals aren't even kicking in until July 1st, um, <laughs> the, you know, the... Uh, it's like an exclamation mark on everything that this organization has been saying to the fan base and to the players 
they've come through with it now, and um, now it's time to go earn the money and win hockey games. Well, they, there's no distractions, um, so that that potential excuse, if you will, is gone. And again, management, ownership have said to this group, uh, we believe in you, we're investing in you, um, now go out and, 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 you know, reward us. And so, you know, it, it certainly shifts the pressure uh, onto this group, you know, the players, the coaching staff, um, to go out and perform to the best of their capabilities. And I think, Huss, you know, the Jets are, are hoping that the Jets team that we saw through the first half of last season, when they were among the heavyweights in the Western Conference, that that is the real Winnipeg Jets, not the team that limped uh, down the stretch and, and you know barely squeaked into the playoffs and then made a a, a whimper upon their their exit. Um, so I, I know there's belief, having been around this team, you know, every day during camp, and you hear the messaging coming out of the room day in and day out. They believe in this group. They believe they have the talent. Um, you know, there's certainly skeptics out there, and part of that is that comes with the territory, Huss, when you've won one playoff series uh, since 2018, as the Jets have done, that people will naturally be skeptical, especially when you keep bringing back a lot of the same core. Now, this isn't the entire, this isn't the exact same team as last year. Um, you know, there, there's been some changes and some significant changes. They're also counting on some internal growth and development. And players who weren't all that healthy last year being healthy and, and contributing and players like Mark Shifley who had a career season in goals um, you know hopefully doing that and then some but also maybe being a more complete player as well so uh, I think it shifts the focus now to the here and now you, you can stop worrying about you know what is what is the first week or two of this season? What might a tough stretch mean in the big picture? We kind of now know what the big picture is, uh, and it's up to the players to you know kind of get to it. Um, Mike, do you think this team is better than it was at the end of last season? And does this change anything as far as expectations for this season? Because, I mean, it's all still the same players, although I guess we do know – that these guys aren't going to be dealt at the deadline. And that, I think, was the huge wild card. And why right. I've been saying, you know, before yesterday afternoon, this was the most interesting team in the league because what happens in the first 25 to 30 games, I think, would dictate where they go. They made it to the crossroads. We've been waiting for them to go one way or the other. And they floored it in one direction <laughs> after sort of being stuck in neutral for a pretty long time. Yeah, they definitely did put the foot on the gas. Um, you know, Hus. <sighs> I think this team, I was looking actually at the, the opening night roster for a year ago compared to what we now know the opening night roster would be. I have no qualms in saying I believe this team is better right now than it was a year ago. Um, you know, you just look at a couple of the decisions that got made the other day. Guys like Axel Janssen, Fialbi, and Kyle Capobianco, they were waived and sent to the moose because there's no room for them on this team right now. Jansen Harkins as well gets waved and picked up. Those are guys that, you know, were, were here to start last season. Um, there's no room for them because this team is deeper. Now, is it better? Does, does more depth mean more wins? Well, we'll see if that translates. But I think Rick Bonus has a lot more options at his disposal, especially when it comes to the forward group. But so much is is going to be determined by things, you know, outside of their control. What's the health going to be like? Can Nikola Ehlers, as he proclaimed a week ago, play all 82 games? Well, he couldn't play any of the six preseason games. Um, so that's a pretty bold proclamation. If Nikola Ehlers can play 82 games or, or close to it, then I like Winnipeg's chances a lot more than if that's a, a really low number. Can Cole Perfetti um, you know, three significant injuries over the last two years. Can he hold up for an entire season? We've seen glimpses of what he can do, uh, but can he stay in the lineup? Um, but I think, you know, when you look at guys they added at the deadline last year and that are back this year, whether it's Niederreiter and Nemestikov, the three players that they got for Pierre-Luc Dubois, all of whom are, you know, in the starting lineup in their top 12, they are a deeper group. Um, you know, a guy like Dylan Sandberg now emerging as a top four defenseman and, you know, with a lot of room, I think, to even grow further than he has. Um, 
if guys like Neil Pionk and Nate Schmidt, can they bounce back uh, after what I think they would admit were tough seasons last year? There's a lot of variables for sure. One constant is they have Connor Hellebuck, and they have him now, we know, for this season and seven more after this. And I guess I'll say this, Huss, a team that has a Connor Hellebuck in net, I think always has a chance. They have a chance on any given night. They have a chance in any given playoff series if they can get that far. So uh, I do like the depth they have. Um, but, you know, you look at the way the Jets, you look at their lineup last year as they came down the stretch. And yes, they got banged up into the playoffs and that obviously hurt them. Uh, they were supposed to have the depth to cover for that. Ultimately, they they clearly did not. Um, but I do like I do like what they have on paper. Uh, but the game isn't played on paper. We'll see how it translates on the ice, uh, and we don't have to wait long. Thankfully, the what felt like the longest training camp and preseason in in hockey history is mercifully over. Great chat, a comment in chat from Aaron Forsh, who is a hockey fan. I'm excited by defensively sound players. A borderline Selkie pervert. <laughs> Interesting way of putting it. <laughs> the deadline deals and PLD trade brought in a lot of players that make this team better. Uh, great, uh, great comment, and uh, hopefully that will be the case. Mike, just quickly on the way out, buried in all of this, you mentioned Nikolai Ehlers was uh, his declaration that he's good to go and will in fact play, which when I woke up yesterday morning and started coming back from Minneapolis was the number one question on my uh, to-do list. Um, we got that answer and then obviously everything else. Uh, all systems go for the club and very importantly for 27. Yeah, and I think everyone around the team, uh, I'm sure, will be holding their breath a little bit, Huss, to see how he, you know, can he get through his first shift? Can he get through the first period? Can he get through the first game? Is he good to go for practice? Uh on Friday before the home opener on Saturday afternoon. Um, you know, these are all questions that we naturally have just because Nikolai Ehlers uh, is, is, has a bit of a history when it comes to getting banged up. And uh, so, yeah, I mean, I'm sure everyone's holding their breath, crossing their fingers. Um, not ideal that the first look we're going to get at that perfetti ehlers rider line is, you know, first period of the first game of the season. Uh, we didn't get any looks, obviously, in the preseason. Uh, but I'm very anxious to see what that trio can do, um, keeping in mind that two-thirds of that trio, Ehlers and Perfetti, are guys that you know you just hope can, can kind of stand up uh, to the wear and tear of the, of the NHL grind. It's a marathon. It isn't a sprint. And those are guys, Huss, who have had trouble finishing the marathon over the last couple of years. Uh, I'm sure you got a lot of writing to do. Uh, looking forward to the free tomorrow. Uh, thanks for doing this, Mike. Uh, we'll talk to you soon, and uh, here's to a great season. You bet, Huss. Always enjoy it. Have a great week. Appreciate it. There is Mike McIntyre. Uh, 666 in chat right now. Wow, pushing 700. If you're new here, welcome to Winnipeg Sports Talk. We're here every day talking uh, Jets and more. 1 p.m. on YouTube. Hit that subscribe button. And thanks again to everyone that got us to 10,000, a big milestone last Friday. All right. Hammer time coming up. Jeff Hamilton on deck. Um, just before we do that, mentioned, but if you missed it right off the top, uh, in one week, WST is getting together in Section 316 and 317 for our first of four games in the Winnipeg Sports Talk Pack. Four amazing games. Dubois return next week. McDavid and the Oilers in November, Saturday night against the Leafs in January, and what could be a huge game in April at home against the Calgary Flames that the Jets will be opening up against. Hit the link in the description of this video if you're with us on YouTube to get on over and grab your packages. We will have early entry. We'll be getting together in that bar right outside the sections. Maybe do it a couple giveaways and uh, getting ready for the game. If you're listening on the podcast, go to winnipegsportstalk.com and click the link and uh, join us for four great Jet games this season. Um, big shout out to our friends at Vita Health Fresh Market. Really appreciate the support from them. Of course, Vita Health is the spot to go for great prices on natural and organic supplements, beauty products, groceries, and Winnipeg's largest selection of local products, too. Of course, they're fully shoppable online at myvita.ca with same-day local delivery. If you get your order in before 11 a.m. And right now, get a free gift when you place an order for $100 or more at myvita.ca. Vita Health, 
a proud local family-owned company since 1936, empowering people to lead healthy lives with six Winnipeg locations and online at myvita.ca. Of course, our friends at Wallace & Wallace are the fencing experts in Winnipeg. You've seen their fences, both commercial, industrial, uh, you know, temporary and residential, all around the city. What you might not know is they're also the leaders in overhead garage doors. And that overhead garage door had lots of ups and downs this summer, working hard to get you from uh, all your summer fun. Well, it's about to work a whole lot harder because winter puts much more stretch on a gar- stress on a garage door. The right time to prevent downtime this winter is now. Call Wallace & Wallace to book your inspection and maintenance service call today for residential and commercial overhead door sales and service. There's only one name or two you need to know, and that is Wallace & Wallace. Uh, I have a feeling that uh, Scheif and Helly might be uh, looking to get a few new suits now that they've got all this extra scratch coming their way. Um Hey, they're going to be in Winnipeg for a long time, and anyone in Winnipeg knows if you're looking for great menswear, F Apparel is the spot. Custom suits beginning at just 400 bucks, along with chinos, golf pants, custom shirts, both tucked and untucked styles, and an incredible selection of menswear accessories. And, fellas, if you're uh, tying the knot or in a wedding party, you can talk to the gang at F Apparel about a 15% discount for the wedding party when you get your suits at F Apparel. It's that easy. Pop on down and see them. 190 Smith Street downtown. You can find out more information or make an appointment online at F, that's E-P-H, apparel.com. All right, let's bring in our pal Jeff Hamilton from the Winnipeg Free Press. Hammer, I was looking forward to uh, talking about that epic bomber win on Friday, and we will get to that in a minute. But uh, much like I said to Mike, uh, take us to uh, yesterday afternoon. What were you up to? How did you find out about the dual signings of Shifley and Hellebuck, and uh, what was your immediate reaction? Uh, Yeah, where was I when it happened? Um, I was melting into my couch watching the final game of the CFL. I believe that was the sports event that I was watching. Uh, there's been so many going on these days and I got a text message, uh, from Ted Wyman from the Winnipeg sun being like, Holy jets. And my first thought was, are they bringing jets dogs back to intermission or, or what's the, what's the, how, how could this be such an excited text messages? And I said, what about the jets? And he's like, surely you see now. So obviously I went to Twitter. I was keeping myself away from all the, the news and whatever, as I, uh, as I watched sports in front of me and then, yeah, I read up on it and it's, yeah, it's just, I, I tweeted out, you know, Mike McIntyre's tweet shortly thereafter, your last guest, my colleague, um, just saying, wow. I mean, I think I was, I was kind of speechless. You know, I don't think anyone saw this coming, you know, pretty typical of the Winnipeg Jets to keep things under wrap um, as long as they were able to do so. And it's just fascinating that both guys to identical term and dollars uh, signed on the line will be Winnipeg Jets, presumably will be Winnipeg Jets for, for quite some time and arguably their entire career. So certainly good news for Jets fans, I, I think, um, but certainly uh, big news for the organization as a whole. It, it, it really is. I mean, it was stunning, and it's stunning on so many levels. And again, two different players, two different positions, both longtime Jets and big parts of um, any success the team's had while they've been here. Um, what's your takeaway from the significance of the fact that they did it together and they signed for the exact same amount? Hmm, the significance of the dual signing and identical numbers. Uh, it tells me, or at least suggests, that both players probably wanted to know what the future of the other guy was, right? Usually in these situations, you know, one one side is patiently waiting for, for the other side to get the deal done because more often than not, there's usually a higher priority. I mean, how, how many times did we talk about priority in the offseason? Who is the top priority? And I think, Huss, you and I both agreed it was – it was Connor Hellebuck. And so whether you're Connor Hellebuck's camp or you're Mark Shifley's camp, you probably want to know, you know, the future of the organization. You want to know what dollars are available and both happen to be tied into the other guy, right? I mean, you know, I imagine Mark Shifley's looking at the situation in net and wondering if, you know, who's what's the future going to look like. He finds out that Connor Hellebuck, you know, is close to signing a deal. And I imagine Connor Hellebuck wanted those same questions. Is Mark Shifley coming back? You know, where's our center situation? And, I think it just, I, I don't know how many of these you're going to see in the future. I don't know how many we've seen in the past, um, but it is quite telling to me. It's telling 
to me that two guys were both open to staying in Winnipeg. And while, you know, this isn't necessarily cements this belief, but I think it, it puts strong, you know, credence behind it is that both wanted to know where each other were going to be next season and whether or not, you know, the plan was to stick with the group and the core. Two guys, as you mentioned off the top, are two big pieces of this core and have been for, for you know, since the Jets came back for the most part. Um, you know, obviously it took them a couple of years to get in there and cement their their roles, but certainly two, two you know, corner pieces of the organization and, and um, you know, the, to- the, the value in the term, I thought you were going to ask me, and maybe that's the next question, you know, what my take on the deals are. But certainly the fact that they were both together and at the same price point tells me that while I don't think the negotiations were, were shared with one another, I think, the, I think the want to be on this, you know, team based on what the other person's decision was, was quite palpable. In these yeah, I, I'm not sure whether we'll, we'll ever get the details and what I would know to uh, understand the, um, you know, what the meetings were at one point. Because, again, it's different agents, different representation, mm-hmm. different players, different positions, and yet they do it together for the exact same amount. And, um Listen, I'm, I, I, I'm still surprised. I mean, I unfortunately, as a big Hellebuck guy, and we can think back to our conversations last year, I mean, I was always holding out hope that they would find a way to keep this guy because I think he's just that important. I mean, I wasn't there on Mark. And, you know, again, there's been, I mean, they've had very different histories here. And, I mean, the last couple of years with, you know, the way the season ended for Shifley in particular, I think obviously lent a lot of people, myself included, to believe that, you know, maybe this team would be going a different direction. But when you go through the summer, the lack of perceived trade value for Mark when he was discussed around it. And interestingly enough, the conversations Hellebuck and Hellebuck's agency had with other teams when they were talking about a potential deal and, and, you know, and re-signing, I think brought us back to this point. Um, But again, never could I have imagined identical deals both in term and in AAV. And I think there's some big, big positives to that. But let's get to what you just mentioned. I mean, now that you've had a day to sort of digest these, um, what is your take on, um, you know, both the the term, the value, um, and what this does for the Winnipeg Jets moving forward, a team that has been very clear in saying that they're not looking at, you know, blowing things up and being a bottom feeder for a few years and thinking about five years from now. They believe in the group that they have and they put their money behind it. Yeah. So I've been getting that question obviously since the news broke and it's, it's crazy because there's more than one answer to all this. There really is no like, yeah, this is an incredible situation for the Winnipeg jets. And and it's, it's, you know, and it's not that this is bad. I mean, it's kind of, there's so many unanswered questions with it. I'll start with the good. I think in the immediate, it's it's good. I think it's good for the organization. I think it's good for the players. Two guys who would have got a pretty good idea of their value this this summer, you know, as you mentioned, because you know, make no mistake here, the Winnipeg Jets were were fielding offers for both players. There was there was efforts made to trade both guys you know, varying degrees of efforts, but efforts nonetheless, because you need to look at the future. You need to, you, it would be bad business if you weren't exploring those options. And and so, but when you look at the immediate future, you have two players, you have your center centerman locked down. You have a centerman who isn't going to have to take questions. And this applies to Connor Hellebuck as well. Won't have to take questions all year long about their future, whether they want to be a Winnipeg Jet, whether they like it here. You know, columns will be written about the locker room, all, 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 all this kind of bad juju, if you will, that's happened over the last couple of years would just kind of continue, continue into this season with, with two key players, you know, not under, not under contract. Well, now that they're under contract, they get their own security. I think, you know, if you look at Mark Shifley, let's take a look at Mark Shifley, eight and a half million dollars. Could he get that dollar value on the open market in July? Yeah, probably. He's probably not getting six or seven years though. And so I think if you're looking, if you're Mark Shifley, you're looking at this season and we talked about this previous weeks, like, you know, you're a guy whose stock has, let's face it, Mark Shifley's stock has fallen over the years, right? I mean, he had a season high or a career high 42 goals last year, but how many times have we read about his defensive deficiencies? We've heard his, we've heard his head coach, you know, rip the, the best guys on the team. And Mark Shifley certainly accounts or counts as one of those guys. We've seen some of the, you know, the benchings and not talking to media, just some of that bad stuff. You know, I don't think he's getting a super long-term deal necessarily. But this way, he's got that security, $8.5 million. You know, that's in the bank for seven more years. That's a respectable, 
uh, number for him. Same thing for Connor Hellebuck. I mean, Connor Hellebuck and Mark Scheifele are both turning 31 years old. I mean, if you look at Carey Price, he made it to what, 34 years old? Uh, Henrik Lundqvist in and around the same time. He's going to be getting paid good money until he's 38 years old. I don't think you can necessarily, and that will get to the bad part, expect him to be a Vesna caliber goalie for seven more seasons, but you can probably expect it for at least two or three. The Jets side on this, I mean, the Jets can, can they needed some major, you know, needed some major um, positive news to them, to, to their fan base, to their organization. Hence the four, four episode documentary that they have pretty much, you know, praying Mark Mark Chipman as the guy who rescued NHL hockey, right? These things are in play to help with the fan base and stuff. And these two signings will do a lot for that. It will help trying to change. I don't think it changes the narrative that free agents don't want to come here. That's probably something Winnipeg is going to have to deal with for a while, but it does make the organization look good. Look at what happened to Calgary Flames a year ago. They said goodbye, you know, to their best player and couldn't re-sign guys. Winnipeg Jets, here they are. They're two cornerstones. Here they are inking a you know a seven year extension. Um, so a lot of positive you know positive news for the Winnipeg Jets right now. But then you let it sink in a little bit, and you wonder, well, how effective is this going to be? And it, are these good deals? One thing it tells me is, okay, I guess Kevin Shevelday-off is going to be here for the long term. I mean, you're allowing you know him that doesn't necessarily secure him for seven years, but he's certainly been allowed to make the moves for. The foreseeable future here which is a big one so his his seat seems colder than it was yesterday uh and then you look at you look at the you look at the term you look at the term and you go okay well eight and a half million dollars is a lot of money it's not going to be a ton of money starting next season and the years after that we're seeing a, a salary cap jump to 87 88 million dollars next season it's supposed to jump you know even more after that so i don't think the 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 contracts are going to prevent the Jets from re-signing, you know, Nikolai Ehlers if they want to, or Kyle Connor or Josh Morrissey later, uh, or Cole Perfetti, or any of the other young guys that are kind of coming up. So that's also good news. But again, it's one of those things where are you playing the win-now game for three, four years from now? Because after that, I'm not 100% sure how valuable. Now, they could prove us all wrong, you know, but just statistics show, stats show that as you get into your early to mid-30s, you're not getting better. We saw it with Blake Wheeler. We saw it with, you know, players around the league. It just, you know, it, your your contract is good until it's not. And I, and I think that's the fear here is that, you know, going with, uh, you know, going with these guys for this long is going to make them competitive. It's going to take them out of any kind of high draft picks. As long as you have Connor Hellebuck in net, at least for the next three, four, five seasons, you're probably not finishing in the bottom 10. I think that's just a fact. Um, and then, and then, but again, after that, you start you start wondering. Well, does the, do these contracts make sense? The good news is you don't have to think about that for a few years. And while there's no point in dwelling on it now, because the reality is, is this is this is the new this is you know the new the the old has become new. The the, the old core is now the new core with these with these contracts. And you just got to hope that this is the winning formula because it does feel. I'd say if there's any negative, if you will. It's just feeling like the same group, the same thing over again. And if they don't see the results in the standings, if we don't start seeing playoff victories, all these things, it seems crazy to me. This de- this deal might seem crazy in three or four years' time. Yeah, well, listen, it's funny that you bring up the Wheeler contract because Wheeler is 37 years old now. Um, you know, 37 will be year like that's the sixth year of the extensions, including this year that's a, there's they're 31. And the eight point five million that these guys are going to be making is the same that Blake was making last year during a cap that was considerably less than will it will be at that point. So, I mean, financially, I think these numbers are way more manageable and make way more sense when you look ahead to the future of what is going to happen with revenue um, and, and where the and where the uh, the, the the league is going. Um, well, look at the salaries right now, Huss. Look at the guys signing big numbers. They're not signing for less than 10. So as far as, you know, sign on the dotted line goes, these are discounts. The problem is the guys that are signing for above 10 are significantly better players and, and in most cases are at a younger age. We'll have more more years involved in that. That's all. Yeah, well, listen, I mean, absolutely. I just mean comparing it to the, the you know, when people want to say, hey, this just happened with Blake Wheeler. Well, Wheeler signed his deal at 33 coming off back-to-back 91-point seasons. Obviously, these are longer deals. And listen, that is the cost of doing business. I mean, especially, 
And, and, and listen, I don't know whether we're going to have to deal with this narrative anymore. Like, you know, to your point about free agency, I mean, yeah, the Jets are never going to be the big fish or the big players. I mean, uh, unless you get to a point where you're like the Edmonton Oilers and everyone expects you to be a team that is absolutely going to be competing for a Stanley Cup. And then guys will go there on a one-year or two-year deal and make the money work because they want to be a part of it. I mean, that's the only way I think the Jets get to that point. But I will say this, for the narrative that we've been fed, and listen, some many people in, in Winnipeg, in this Winnipeg market have said it as well, but it's far louder from Toronto or all the big hockey media is and everywhere else that everyone is just dying to get out of Winnipeg. Um, I, I mean, are we done with that? I mean, now, like, it, it's been proven time and time and time again that this organization has found a way to sign just about everyone. Listen, there have been a few players leave. We know the Jacob Truba story. Pierre-Luc Dubois just left. But, I mean, what do you think that this does, this statement by the organization and those two players does to uh, maybe quiet what I think is a tired narrative to a lot of people that guys may be here for a time, but the second they've got a chance to be somewhere else, they're going to do it. Yeah, I think it changes that narrative for sure. Um, I don't know how it wouldn't change that narrative. I don't think it changes the narrative as drastically as one might think. I mean, again, going back to the earlier comments, you know, I think Mark Shifley probably isn't getting that deal, at least not that term anywhere else. And and we already know that Connor Hellebuck, while certainly a great goaltender, you know, the, the NHL has shifted over the last few seasons right before really Mark Shifley's eight year, right after, sorry, Mark Shifley's eight year deal where they started paying people for what you're going to do, not what you've done. And so the Jets need to be a little bit careful here. And I, and again, with the salary cap rising eight and a half million dollars in a few years is not going to look like a ton of money. It's not going to be nothing, but it's not going to be looking like a ton of money. But at the same time, I don't think that, you know, while, while it certainly changes the narrative that players want to come back to Winnipeg, I also think you need to take into consideration what was waiting for players outside. I mean, goaltenders are no longer being paid seven, eight-year deals at 31 years old. They just aren't. I mean, you can look at the proof. It doesn't do you well. And uh, Connor Hellebuck was probably looking at a three, four, five-year deal next season with another team at high money, maybe even higher money. But I do think that while it does change that narrative, you also have to understand that I think the best opportunity, money talks, the best income for these guys was going to be in Winnipeg with this deal. So I, while I do think it changes that narrative, I don't think that you know you can say that these two players were going to hit free agency next year and cash in. They, they very well could have off a, off a strong season this year, and you only need one team to really do that, uh, to really want you for that to happen. But I think you know, in all likelihood, you're not getting a seven by eight and a half million dollar deal anywhere else. Yeah, well, I mean, certainly not now because they didn't have the opportunity to do it. And it would have ended up putting on, I mean, we've all talked about contract years before. I mean, so much more pressure on all those players to go out, you know, have huge years and earn it. Um, but at the same time, all of that is in the rearview mirror right now. I mean, to me, Mark Scheifele is the most fascinating because we've seen some incredible highs from him. Um, and, and, you know, we've seen some tough times and some lows that have deserved, that have been, you know, I think deservedly drawn the ire of some of the fan base at times. But, like, to listen to him today and think about what this offseason has been, potentially being moved, and then not a lot of trade traction, shall we say, for that. And I wonder how that resonated for him. I certainly wonder how having not having Blake Wheeler with this team anymore here changes Mark's situation, maybe perspective a little bit. Having Adam Lowry be the captain, a guy that he's played with for a long time, and he and Josh Morrissey being, you know, a huge part of that leadership group moving forward and the commitments that they've made to Winnipeg. Um, but, you know, for all the talk about Mark's contract for a number of years, and he was relatively underpaid, and this was something that was going to be done, and there was certainly, uh, there was absolutely, I can tell you without equivocation, at the draft talking to people in the know about what they were hearing about Mark Shifley is one of the things that was sort of scaring off maybe some teams would be the ask of what an extension was. The extension's done. He has signed that contract. He's had a smile on his face, said all the right things today, and now it's time to go and earn it. Um, listen, for all the warts in the defensive game, we know what he can do offensively, but there's also a part of being a real leader and of being part of this team. How do you see things going forward for Mark? Like We can talk about year five and six and seven later on because I think this team looks very different at that time. And I mean... 
Who knows if he's even the number one center? Probably not at 36 or 37 years old. Hopefully not at 36 or 37 um, yeah. years old. Well, hey, what if you're still playing? I mean, look at Kopitar. Like Kopitar, and I listen, Kopitar is an incredible 200-foot player, a true superstar, and has been the man for a long time with the Los Angeles Kings. But, I mean, he just re-upped for another, I believe, three years at his age. I mean, it's not unheard of. And listen, we know that he's a pretty dedicated guy, takes very good, good care of himself. But I just mean as a player and as a part of this team, for a guy that at time looked to be, I don't want to say, but kind of on an island at times last year, He's bought in, the team's bought in to him. How, how do you see his situation maybe changing now that this has all been done? And the only question is about production, wins, and moving forward as a key part of this team long-term for the future. Yeah, I guess you hope it's a weight lifted off his shoulders, you know, and that he can breathe and, and you know, really continue to set, you know, set roots here and, and, and again, I, I just, I just think it's it. Every player thinks about it, right? And that's we talked about this in the, you know, in weeks prior that it's, it's not a great situation to be a. You already overthink your game every night, right? Every time you know. And Mark Shifley, we all know about how much he cares about, you know, bettering himself and you know all the film he watches and all those things and, and the work he puts in with Adam Oates and all that stuff. So you know he's critical of his own game, right? Um, I think that would be magnified if you were playing in a year where you didn't have a contract the next season. I mean, you, you, you hope that that gives him the confidence. You hope that, you know, you, every player wants to be wanted. Clearly, the Winnipeg Jets want Mark Shifley. So you hope that him getting that financial security, getting the, you know, the, I guess the not so great things about the business out of the way and, and, and done before the season starts is going to allow him to play freer, allow his mind to play freer. And you hope that translates to, you know, goals and, and strong play, right? I mean, um, there's always the risk too that once players get contracts that they take it easy or they don't they don't try as hard. They've already kind of cashed in. I don't see Mark Shifley as that guy. I certainly don't see Connor Hellebuck as that guy. No, nor do I see really any player that goes out there and, and just mails it in because they've already got a contract. But we have seen players we have seen players who have in the first year of their deal. Sometimes it's too much pressure. Sometimes it's whatever. I don't see any of that happening for either of these veteran players. I think this is an opportunity for Mark to again know where he's going to be, concentrate on hockey. Um, you just you just kind of hope that this team can take the next step. And clearly the Winnipeg Jets believe that Mark Shifley and Connor Hellebuck are two guys that are going to be a big part of that. And, um, you know, I'm not saying they're gambling on that as in it's a massive risk, but you're gambling every time you, you sign players to long-term contracts, the impact their team will have on the impact they'll have on your team for the, for those years. And so, well, I think it's something that Mark Shifley can certainly take a, you know, a, a deep breath after and, and again, focus on what matters the most and that's performing on ice. Um, but we'll see, I guess, uh, I guess we'll have to, we'll have to see those games to see how it translates. Um, you know, we're going to be uh, chopping this up with Mike Kelly, who is one of our favorites from a NHL network and a little talk on the uh, drop of the puck tonight and the upcoming season, his thoughts on the jets in a few minutes. Um, I will say this, not that, I mean, this has been a lot of fun. We can see with the huge numbers in chat, this is the story right now. But I didn't want to uh, just bury that football game on Friday night. I mean, uh, no. listen, it is a bomber bye week, and we'll have a lot of time to talk about this going forward. But oh my God, Jeff, what a freaking game! What a performance by the Bombers. This team. I mean, we talk a lot about championship pedigree, and you know, a level of confidence and belief in never quitting. That was an all-time CFL regular season game. Period. Especially when you think about the stakes at it. Um, but. My God, the Bombers did it again, and uh, Bomber fans are getting ready to uh, welcome the West in on November 11th, uh, which is all but a certainty, although a little bit of work left to be done. Yeah, there was only, there was one point in that game. It was it was obviously the fourth quarter. Uh, it was when it was the fumble turnover, um, the interception. Sorry, so the interception the other way, and it was like, oh, uh, Bombers are down by I think at that point ten points. Not a lot of time left, maybe like five, six minutes remaining, whatever it was. And you're kind of like, okay, maybe that's the nail in the coffin. And then you see Willie Jefferson figure things out. You get that, you get that, you get that sack, you get that strip ball, get, I think it was Dietrich Nichols that hopped on it. And all of a sudden there's new life. And I think what we saw from them in the last, whatever, X amount of minutes in that fourth quarter and into overtime is what we've seen from that team several occasions over the last few years. Just that resiliency, that, that, that no panic, you know, I'm talking with, bomber staffers during the game you know being like what's the sideline look like people that i know that are there and they said it's calm it's poised it's you know guys aren't 
panicking. Guys aren't frustrated. It's just, it's almost weirdly business as usual. There was almost a weird calm on the sidelines. Well, we saw them go to work. First, it was getting that touchdown. Obviously, that 13-yarder to Drew Wolitarski was 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 massive. And then and then to have that big stand, right? That big stand at the goal line. I mean, kudos to Adam Big Hill for getting on his horse and and getting to uh, and, and and getting to Vernon Adams right before he he got to that first line marker. And then, of course, the the, the you know the third down package and stopping them there. I mean, that's that's so massive. And of course, we saw Sergio Castillo kick that. That, uh, I think I, I think I was a bit disappointed in that they you know they couldn't move the ball for they they were moving the ball quite well at that point and and to get in the end zone but then to force overtime and and certainly to uh, it's hilarious right because the Lions won the toss and it had the Bombers won the toss they were going to give the ball to the Lions there's no doubt about it that's what teams just do so the Lions gave it to the Bombers and they made quick work of OT Brady Oliveira I mean how many times have we got to talk about him week in and week out he's just having a terrific season. Um, and then for the defense to come up big again in overtime and, and force that what you know what accounted to a Hail Mary on third and 18 that Evan Holm eventually knocked down to the ground and secured the win. I mean, I, you know, I've seen a lot of bomber games over the years, but that has to be one of the most impressive, you know, as you mentioned, just given the stakes in the game, um, just, you know, just the winner of that game. And they're not guaranteed, a, you know, a trip to the Great Cup, but man, is their trip to the championship game all the more easier. And so just when you consider everything that was at stake in that game and what the Bombers were able to do, while it isn't incredibly surprising because we've seen similar things like that, it was no less impressive um, just how they continued to dig deep into whatever it is they're digging into and finding what they need to find to uh, to come back in games like that. Yeah, it was uh, <laughs> it was a game we'll be remembering for a long time and uh, sets up a potential rematch from these two, between these two clubs on November 11th at IG Field in the middle of November in Winnipeg, which is a hell of a lot different than BC Place, I'll tell you that much. Oh, big time. I mean, we I think we might have talked about this last week, but it was like, had the Bombers now, the Bombers certainly did not want to have to go through that extra game, hosting what would likely be an absolutely putrid Saskatchewan Rough Riders oh, team. Oh, they Holy stink. Smokes. Oh, my God. Um, but, you know, having to play that extra game, then having to – go to BC place, you know, that atmosphere, it's nothing like IG field, but it's, but it's not, it's not quiet. Like I, I actually really like the energy at BC place, even before, you know, Amar Doman came in and, and, and really, and really boosted that, those crowds. So uh, it, it's just a much better situation for the Bombers to get back to their fourth great cup, to get back to a great cup game that, you know, I, you know, I think it's fair to say will define whether or not they're a dynasty in this league. I mean, they need to be winning. And so to get, to pull out what they pulled off, uh, and to get that route, you know, probably certainly, most certainly going to be playing the BC Lions again. But to be a, to be do to do so in the frigid temperatures of Winnipeg, November, than than the, uh, the the nice confines of a of a uh, of roofed BC place, I think works extremely well for the Bombers' favors and getting back to that big game. Howard, great stuff as always, buddy. Appreciate you jumping on, and uh, we'll look forward to uh, dropping the puck tomorrow and uh, getting ready for the rest of this Bomber season and see if they can make it back to the big game in Hamilton. Always a good time, Haas. Thanks for having me on, and shout out to the commenters. Love me or hate me, you guys make the show. Take care. There's a lot of them today. Hit the sub button if you haven't already. Shout out to everyone that helped us get to 10K last week on uh, that big Friday show here on Winnipeg Sports Talk. And while you're at it, such a big crowd. Hit that thumbs up, too. Wouldn't mind uh, spiking those numbers and uh, getting more people checking out what we're doing here on Winnipeg Sports Talk. All right, more coming up on the Hellebuck and Shifley extensions and, of course, the upcoming NHL season, which begins tonight. What a way to get going. Sid the Kid versus Connor Bedard. Cannot wait for this one tonight. But, of course, great Bomber chat with Jeff Hamilton. We'll have much more on the Bombers heading into next week's home game with the Edmonton Elks, where they can officially clinch the West. All of our Bomber reports on Winnipeg Sports Talk are brought to you by Princess Auto, proud sponsors of the Bombers and Winnipeg Sports Talk and the place where you'll find the best deals on the most unique assortment of tools and equipment around. Everything you need to complete the projects on your list or start something new is at Princess Auto. Pop by and see them in-store on Panet Road or Portage Avenue West. You can always shop online 24-7, 365 at princessauto.com. Big shout-out to our pals over at Consolidated Supply. What a summer that they have had. They are the leaders in irrigation systems, artificial turf, both indoor and outdoor, and golf carts is the official club car dealer in Manitoba. What you might not know is they've got great other options for your property, 
including hot tubs and amazing outdoor kitchens. Not to mention they are the leaders in small engine parts and repair. So much consolidated supply can do for you, your home, and your company. Pop by and see them at their showroom. Open to the public, 1395 Niagara Road East, or you can find out more online at cte.ca. I had to laugh. Uh, our pal Isha Boy Bruce in chat saying, I've got another eight years of that beauty reverse retro Hellebuck jersey. Well, I have a feeling that um, there'll be a few people heading down to Royal Sports where I got that beauty for um, maybe re-upping their 37s or 55s. Of course, we've got some new players on the Jets too. The home opener is on Friday. If you haven't already, get on down to Royal Sports and check out the best selection of Jets merchandise. You'll find thousands of of uh, pieces of, of Jets Uni, not to mention uh, many exclusives that you won't find anywhere else. And while you're checking out that Jets section, of course, get ready for the playoffs and the Winnipeg Blue Bombers with tons of Winnipeg Blue Bombers gear, NFL, international soccer, and more. And hey, as we drop the puck on the NHL season, the puck is dropping around minor hockey as well and Royal Sports for 40 years Family owned has been the number one hockey superstore in Winnipeg. It's all there in one spot, 750 Pemina Highway. Make sure to give Royal Sports a follow on Instagram as well at Royal Sports Pemina for the latest merchandise drops and sale information. Hockey's back tonight, everyone. As I mentioned, Bedard Crosby going head to head in that opening game tonight. One of three on the docket before the Jets and Flames get at it tomorrow, whether it's tonight or for Bedard Crosby or tomorrow for Jets Flames. Boston Pete's is the best place in town to get together with your pals to watch the big game on the big screen with big sound, all while enjoying ice cold schooners, world famous BP wings, the gourmet pizzas, and the latest from the Boston Pizza feature menu. Head on down to your BP local BP tonight. And if you are staying at home, you can always get the great taste of BP delivered at home by checking out bostonpizza.com. All right. Much more coming up on Shifley and Hellebuck extensions in the NHL season. Right now, let's welcome in Mike Kelly from the NHL Network to WST. Mike, it's great to have you on. You ready to drop the puck tonight or what? I've been waiting for a while. Yeah, 100%, Andrew. And um, as much as I like the summer and the downtime and all that, I feel like for the last month, I've just been like, let's go. Let's go. I don't care about roster cuts. I don't care about this. Uh, so... It'll be fun, and and to start it off like like the marquee game, probably people are looking at is Bedard and Crosby. That's that's pretty sweet. Yeah, I mean, what a I, I will give the schedule maker an A plus, <laughs> um, and it's great. We'll wait till tomorrow to see the Jets drop the puck in Calgary. But listen, Mike, before we get to <laughs> tonight's opening night, there was a bit. Well, it wasn't one bomb. There was two dropped by Kevin Sheveldayoff off from the Winnipeg Jets yesterday, matching seven year contracts at eight point five AAV. For their Vesna Trophy winning goaltender Connor Hellebuck and uh, their longtime number one center Mark Shifley, what was your what was your initial reaction when you saw the alert that um, the Jets did it not with just one player but two? Uh, wow, was the first one, and then you know, good for the Jets uh, fans was was the second one. I think there's a lot of different angles to come at, at this with. I'd say the first thing is look, if you're a Winnipeg Jets fan, you got two elite players locked up probably till the end of their careers. And, and these are guys that you're going to pay tickets to go watch, go down to the rank, watch them play. Um, they're great players. The team is better because you have them on your team. So if outside looking in, look, and I'm not in Winnipeg, I'm not trying to be a Jets fan or understand what it's like in that city, but you got two great players locked up. Is it longer? Is it more money than you probably would like to see? Of course it is because these guys were going to be free agents that could do whatever they want. So that's what it takes. Um, I understand the side of it as well, whereby you're looking at comparables for a goalie, for instance, who is going to earn that contract over the next eight years of one year left and then seven more. And he's 30 years old. It's very unlikely that that is the case. Um, you look at, you know, Carey Price is a recent example of a guy in his mid thirties, still playing at a really high level, got hurt three years effectively over. Other guys that have been elite like Hellebuck have played a little longer, but the performance tails off a bit. That's just going to be what it is. Um, and I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing. Like, of course, these may not age gracefully, but you, it, the, the cap's going up and you get them at a dollar amount. It's not ridiculous. And they're locked in. And everyone's just been leaving Winnipeg, right? You got two players, star players, 
putting a stake in the ground saying we're staying here and we want to try to win. Well, and, and listen, the, the, you just mentioned, I mean, there is always been a narrative that no one wants to come to Winnipeg. And, and certainly for the last couple of years, all we've heard about is this uh, doomsday scenario at the end of all of these contracts of guys that have been, you know, really the core of the Winnipeg jets that, um, that everything was going to be gone. Um, like there definitely is a psychological boost, I think, to the fan base right now to have these players come back. But I also think, Mike, it sends a big message to everybody else in that locker room. Um, certainly the new players that have just come in from the Kings, the young players that will be moving into this organization this year and next year and the year after. Um, a lot of other tangible benefits other than having these guys out there producing the way they have throughout their career. Yeah, and that, that's an important element in all of this that you have to consider. It's not just the on-ice performance. You are trying to sell season tickets. You're trying to make the playoffs. You're trying to generate revenue. Um, there, there's a lot of things that go into it. I, I'd say, again, for hockey fans in Winnipeg, uh, there are unbelievable fans out there. This should ensure that the team should be competitive for the next number of years, four, five, six, you know, pick whatever you want, um, which is good. And... Like, I think the world of Connor Hellebuck, I think we I've been on with you plenty of times, Andrew, and we talked about him and, and how great I think he is. Mark Scheifele still a guy that can fill the net. Um, good playmaker, probably better than he gets credit for. Uh, defensively, look, I think it is what it is at this point. He's not he's not awful by any stretch, but I don't think you're also going to see a new leaf turned over where he becomes Patrice Bergeron. So it just, that's what it is. He's a great player, um, and he can be a number one center on a good team. So that's what you've got. Um my concern could be this, and I'm not saying that I wouldn't assign these guys. I'm just saying my concern could be this. Are the Jets now going to just be good enough or long enough without ever being a playoff big-time threat? Let's go win a Stanley Cup. Um, are they going to find themselves in a couple of years and over the next few years kind of in that in and around the mix to make the playoffs, maybe third in the Central, maybe win a round? You don't want to be that team for the next five, six, seven years. We just saw another team in the Central Division say we've had enough of being that team, and that was Nashville. Yeah, and they've obviously made it made a big, big turnover with uh, with their roster and uh, have gone a little bit younger this year. The Jets do have, I mean, Rucker McGrory uh, projects to be in the lineup next year. We'll see what happens with Brad Lambert and Chaz Lucius. I mean, some younger players getting ready to uh, to move into that group. Um but I would say that Hellebuck, but Chifley as well, I mean, obviously they're identical, identical contracts. Having Hellebuck in the net immediately makes the Jets competitive night in and night out. And yeah, I mean, hell, we saw another highly paid goalie help his team go on a run last uh, spring with the Florida Panthers. I, I'll say this about both of the contracts. Um I'm amazed that they were able to get Hellebuck done for the number and the term that he did. I mean, just based on what he's really? done. Well, and, and here's why. I mean, he's now the fourth highest paid goaltender in the National Hockey League. Usually when you have a guy with the results and the um, the numbers that he's put up and the success that he's had, you know, usually when you think about the time that has passed since those other contracts were signed, you're kind of getting closer to resetting the market. Now, maybe the summer discussions around the league bore out that that money wasn't there and they realized that this is actually around what the best deal was going to be. Um, but, I, you know, when you think about the the 10 and a half, the 10, the nine and a half that is already out there, you know, for Hellebuck to come in at eight and a half, um, certainly, and I was looking at some of the other evolving hockey numbers. I mean, they had in at 9.2 for seven. Like, I thought they did a good job. But, and then... The, the fact that they got both of these guys to buy in together for the same amount, um, it is unique. It has happened before. I mean, we saw Kane and Taves do it. Um, certainly the Wild with two unrestricted free agents and Suter and Parise. What were those, 12-year deals? I've seen some comparison yeah, to that. A little bit million different. bucks or something. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, there's uh, – listen, there's financial security for both of these guys and their families. But there also is an element of <clears> – <throat> a really outward buying into the Winnipeg Jets, the direction of this team that I don't think can be understated both in the market, but also as a message to the rest of the league, or maybe the guys in the Toronto, in Toronto mainly, that tell us over and over again that everyone just wants to get the hell out of here ASAP. Yeah, that that is a huge part of it. Uh, and I think you make an excellent point because whether that narrative is true or not, the reality is that there have been marquee players that wanted to leave. 
maybe it has nothing to do with the city. Maybe it was something with the team or the organization or their own personal preference. It could have been any number of things, but it was it was happening. So this protects against that, right? Because who wants to go play in Edmonton? Well, what if you get McDavid and Dreisaitl? Now a lot of people want to go play in Edmonton. Who wants to go play in Ottawa? Well, they're an up-and-coming team in a Canadian market that would be a blast to play in. I'm from Ottawa. I'll pump that city's tires anyways. But um, So yeah, it sends a message. Look, we got a good team. I, I project the Jets this year to finish in a wild-card spot and make the playoffs. So they're, they're a solid team. I, I, they obviously lost a little bit of high-end with what's gone on recently, but they made up for it with a little bit more depth. Um, Gabe Velarde on the NHL Network was my breakout player of the year in the league to watch for. And that's when I thought he might be second-line center playing with Ehlers. Now he's top-line with, um, uh, with Shifley. So um, they're a good team. They're a good team. Hellebuck will ensure, like you said, that they're always going to be competitive anyways. The Jets, I thought, made strides for a good chunk of last year defensively, certainly much better than years past. Yep, a little bit, but I think Rick Bonus brings that structure there that as long as they're buying into it and executing, they will be fine. Um, and then, you know, Hellebuck, I go back to look at the last two seasons. He's top five in the league and goal saved above expected, which is where I go right away to evaluate uh, a goaltender, an isolated goaltender performance. Um, and he's there with the big boys, with Saros and Shesterkin and Sorokin and Vasilevsky. So um, the only thing about the number that I would say I did, uh, you know, kind of surprised me a bit was – I can't imagine another team giving Hellebuck that contract next year, seven years at that dollar amount. I think the age would be the thing that would scare you. Um, I could see a lot of teams going four years, five years. Uh, maybe some would have, but you know, in the end, you're a Jets fan. <laughs> there are so many teams that wish they had Connor Hellebuck or anything that even looked like Connor Hellebuck. So you got him for another eight years. Be excited. Uh, by Kelly NHL network with us. Uh- Mike, you mentioned you think the Jets can be a playoff team. Um, I mean, listen, Blake Wheeler is gone, and I think that was more kind of moving. I mean, Blake was pretty productive last year when he still had 55 points. Um, I think they needed to shake up the, the well, dynamic. Right? It, it, exactly. Well, and I mean, yeah. that, that's going to be a lot. I mean, we'll see how the identity is, uh, ent- identity of this team grows throughout the year, how things will be different. They've got a heck of a leader, and Adam Lowry is the captain in a bit of a different role than maybe some of the uh, the top players on teams that are the captain. I think a lot of that is about culture and about buying in. But with Dubois leaving and the three guys from the Kings coming in, um, when you look at this team on paper, are the Jets better than they were last year? Have they taken a step back or are they just different? And um, I guess we'll see 382. It, that's really tough to answer without seeing it, right? Because you can you can do what I do, which is the player archetype modeling, line projections, team projections, all that stuff. It's on paper. We haven't seen these guys play together in the regular season. And there's always elements of chemistry that we cannot quantify. So it's, I don't have an answer for you um, in terms of will they or won't they. I think they have every opportunity to be just as good and potentially better because like you said, they're deeper. Like, I don't see why Gabe Velarde can't score 30 goals playing on that top line, getting power play time. He's great in front of the net. Um, he works well in tight spaces. He's got a good shot. Um, I think he can be a 30-goal, 70-point guy. Maybe that's this year. Maybe it's next year. I think that's what he can be anyways. Uh, I follow is a you know, well-rounded guy. You can use him in a lot of different situations. So it adds balance, obviously. Um, but again, ELD's gone. <laughs> guy's a heck of a player uh, who plays down the middle too. So... I think you do have some of that luxury where I know they're starting Velarde on the wing. You know, Perfetti's going to get second line center. Look, um, you can slide Velarde into the middle if you need to. You can move some things around. Um, so they're not stuck. Um, so, I, I, yeah, I think they have every opportunity to be as good as they've been uh, last year and, and potentially better. What uh, What are your thoughts about Cole Perfetti moving into the, uh, into the middle? I mean, obviously he played there at, as a junior player. First couple of years in the league had been mostly on the wing and he's had a couple of injuries that have, you know, set him back significantly and made him miss a, a bit of time. Uh, both the challenge for a young player to move into the center and uh, thoughts on Cole's ability to uh, be productive there. Yeah, it, it'll be, it'll be a new experience, obviously for him, um, especially, you know, top six center role. That's, that's not easy. I think, I think it would be, you know, talking to guys that have played in the league and, and gone through similar type of experiences, playing, starting in the wing, then moving to the middle. Um, 
can be very helpful. You understand, obviously, what your wingers are doing and playing that position. Uh, you're you're going to be deeper in the defensive zone playing center. You're going to have different responsibilities, obviously. Um, I think what helps Perfetti is how well he thinks the game. Uh, hockey IQ, it kind of anticipation. Um, I think he's got a lot of gifts in that sense. And that ultimately will help a centerman. A lot of great centermen have that. But ability aside, I think he thinks the game very well. And that's going to help him playing in the middle. Um I wonder, you know, Paul Stastny maybe was is, is one of the most intelligent players the league has seen in a while in the way that he thinks the game. I'm the fastest guy, you know, the hardest shot, um, but you so reliable and just thought the game so well. I, maybe if, if Winnipeg can find something in that mold with, with Perfetti in that sense, um, that would be a pretty big win. Uh, Mike, you mentioned you do like the Jets as a playoff team. How do you see the Central shaking out this season? Um, look, I, I like Dallas a lot. I've, I've always kind of liked them. Um, I've always liked them in kind of like that second tier of real legit contenders. I, they might be kind of moving up into the lower part of the first tier. I think with Ottinger's progression, they have a great team, more balanced than they've had before. Um, Mira Haskin is a, a top defenseman in the league. I'd have them top five. Uh, I like them, them in Colorado, I think will be kind of jockeying for those first couple spots. Um, after that, I think it gets, you know, it wouldn't shock me if there were a couple of different teams that could finish third, fourth in the division. Like, I, I don't love Nashville's team, and obviously they're they're going in a bit of a different direction here, but UC Soros, like Hellebuck, like he's going to win you games on his own and probably keep them in the mix. Um, Minnesota, I still think, is probably the next after Colorado, Dallas. That's why I've got Winnipeg in the fourth spot and in a wild card position. Um, and you go from there, like, St. Louis is a bit of an interesting one. I've, I've heard different opinions on, you know, I think they're going to be a playoff team or I think they're going to take another step back and miss. I, I don't have them in now. Um, so I, I think that's the top four and some, and I, th I do think Colorado and Dallas are kind of the class of it. It was interesting hearing uh, some people like getting pretty high on Arizona, which I think they're going to be better. Obviously they went out and got some real NHL players this year. I can't see a scenario where they make the playoffs. Like we're talking about a monumental jump, which can happen. We saw New Jersey did it, but boy, am I not comparing those teams. Um, so they, they should be more competitive, but um, I still think they got a ways to go. Um, the Jets, of course, opening up tomorrow night in Calgary. Just a quick thoughts on the uh, three Canadian teams and where they sit into that Pacific division with Edmonton, the uh, favorites, Calgary and the Vancouver Canucks. I think this is going to be a huge bounce back here for Calgary and it won't shock me if they win the division. I've got them in the two or three spot. I think they're a top three team in that division. And it's a tough one because you got Vegas outside of that. You've got Seattle and LA. Um, Seattle rode some percentages last year that are going to be difficult to replicate. And it's not to say they're not a good team. because They probably have the most balanced forward group in the league. And there's a lot of value in that. Um, if those percentages, I'm talking about scoring versus shots versus scoring chances, all that. If that not even breaks back to even, but it just normalizes a bit, you're taking wins and points away. Um, LA, I love. So it, it's going to be a it's going to be tough for the top three. I, I think Edmonton is there. Uh, I think Calgary's there. I would take Vegas right now, probably LA in the four spot. Um, that's not to say LA couldn't go on and win the Western Conference, play for a cup. I think any of those teams, but they're really good. But maybe the one that would surprise people in that is Calgary. Um, I just, I really didn't like the way they played offensively last season. They're, they seem to be the only team in the league that um, didn't understand that shot volume is not the greatest way to try to produce shot quality and ultimately goals. Um, they are going to have a different approach with Mark Savard in the mix here this season. They've got the players to do it. Um, so I think we're going to be talking about the Calgary Flames as uh, a very competitive team in that division. Uh, what about the Canucks? Uh, do, you, do you expect much from them? I expect a little better. I know that's, a, a, again, a popular pick to make the playoffs. I don't see it. Um, I, I don't think they're there, again, when you just think of the division. Like, tell me, who's Vancouver better than? Vegas, Edmonton, Calgary, Seattle, L.A. That's five teams. Tough division. Right. So uh, it's rare that you see five get into the playoffs in, in, in one uh, conference. 
maybe they could jump one, maybe even two of those teams. Um, at best, you're scrapping for a wild card spot, I think. Uh, so, no, I, I don't think they're there. Mike, if you had to throw a percentage chance of the Cup returning to Canada this season, any of the seven Canadian teams, obviously we've got Toronto and Edmonton would be the biggest favorites. Uh, how likely do you think that is? You know, the, the answer that comes into my head right away as a Canadian and as a big hockey fan is zero because it just doesn't happen. <laughs> so like, I'm, just, I'm just surly and angry about that. I think it's better positioned than it's been in a while. And that's good. Edmonton's the obvious one. They could win a Stanley Cup this year. They won it last year. They, they're they right there. Calgary could do what I think. Um, I've always not loved Toronto. They're a great team. They've got great players. I just always think they're missing something. And, and I don't just say that vaguely. Like, if you follow me on social media or TV or whatever, like, I, I will talk specifically about what I think they're missing in any given year, but um, I, I don't love their their decor. Um, they've got goalies that are capable, but we just don't know for sure. So anyways, I, I like Toronto as kind of that second tier cup contender, potentially. They could do it. Like, they're not a bad team. Of course, they could do it. So I think you've got three teams um, that, are, you know, wouldn't shock people if they got to a final or potentially won it. That's better than we've been able to say for a while in this country. So put me down for uh, 21%, which one in five is pretty good. No doubt about it. Mike Kelly, NHL Network, with us on Winnipeg Sports Talk. Mike, so great to have the game back and great to have you back on the program. Going to be uh, whipping around the league uh, tonight on uh, NHL Network. Fill people in on uh, what you and the gang have coming up and uh, where people can find you this season. Yeah, thank you. Uh, excited to be back again with the NHL Network. Um, I have an extension there, so I'll be there for the next few years, which is great. Um, I'm going to be on NHL on the Fly, which is our overnight show at Loops all morning as well, if you get the NHL Network. Um, if you're in Canada and you don't, um, be sure to follow me on social media, at Mike Kelly NHL. Uh, I post some clips there, and I'll be trying to tweet more than I even have in the past this year. Um and uh, putting out or some original content there as well. So you can follow me on social media and uh, I'm going to be putting out, you know, with sport logic and some of the information that we track. Um, I'll be putting some stuff out on Connor Bedard as the game's going on, kind of uh, all the different metrics that we look at, how he's doing. Uh, is it massive overkill for game one of a kid's career? 100% it is. And I'm doing it. So if you want in-depth Bedard uh, as the game's going on, give me a follow on, on X. I guess <laughs> over under 32 and a half goals for Bedard in his rookie season. Over, over 32 and a half goals under 75 points. <laughs> Love it. Mike, thanks so much for doing this. Can't wait to uh, chop it up with you throughout the season. Enjoy night. Number one back at work and uh, congrats on that seven by 8.5 extension with the NHL network. <laughs> Seven years, eight and a half dollars. I mean, I do it for free. I love this stuff, as you know. So thanks for having me. You're the best, Mike. Thanks. All right. Great stuff with Mike Kelly. Always appreciate him jumping on with us. Um, we got to talk about some Jets lines for the upcoming season and opening night tonight in the National Hockey League. But first, Jet fans, don't forget, if you're showing up at the uh, home opener on Saturday afternoon, 3 p.m. or any of the other 40 games this season, good news. Our favorite local beer, Little Brown Jug, is now in Canada Life Center. Little Brown Jug, now a partner of the Winnipeg Jets. And both 1919 and Generic Lager are available at Craft Beer Corner. Where to find it? Let me help you with that. Lower Bowl, North End, near the old Moxies. You'll have to go and check out everything they've done with the space. It's phenomenal. But the best addition is the addition of Little Brown Jug in 1919. You can also get it in the south end of the uh, of the main concourse. And then upstairs, uh, Craft Beer Corner is the bar outside Section 310, which would technically be the Donald and Graham corner of the arena. And, of course, our four-game pack is just a few sections over uh, at the sort of the Hargrave and Graham corner. So we can pop over there and grab a few little brown jugs as well when we get together with WSDers next Tuesday for game number one of our Winnipeg Sports Talk pack. Check the link in the description or winnipegsportstalk.com for a link on that. <clears throat> of course, little brown jug 
proud sponsors of Winnipeg Sports Talk and Winnipeg's number one local beer. Available now, not just at Canada Life Centre, but also IG Field for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. Pop by and see them on William Avenue and find out more online, including delivery citywide at littlebrownjug.ca. And a huge shout out to our good friends, Nick and Nikki in the Nick and Nikki DQ group. Four DQ locations waiting for you folks. DQ Northgate, DQ Polo Park, DQ St. Anne's and DQ Niverville. Delicious blizzards, amazing stack burgers, and so much more. And for those of you out in Niverville, don't forget Nick and Nikki just opened up the new pita pit there as well. Healthy, delicious, fast and fresh pita pit cannot be beat. And great catering as well. They'll help you out with that. You can hit them up on X at pita pit Niverville. All right, let's get Remus in here. And Remo, huge show today, as expected with the big news yesterday. But uh, we got a season to get going tonight. Three games in the NHL. Our first chance to put a little sprinkle on NHL hockey and your last chance to maybe get in on some Connor Bedard season props or, uh, well, props really for any of the three teams that are playing tonight. Yeah, the you know, there's a game on today, 4.30, be the Tampa and Nashville. Triple header. That's actually actually great. Well done. And I was looking at Tampa's, you know, we had Greg Wyshynski on last week. And I posted that video of a season preview uh, on the channel this morning. And he was saying, you know, Tampa is one of his disappointing teams. He doesn't think they're going to make the playoffs. Look at their lineup. It is uh, their forward depth, not what it used to be. Uh, their defense depth, aside from Hedman Sturgachev, uh, not what it used to be. So I'm curious to see how it's going to go this season for Tampa. They don't have Vasilevsky uh, to start the year. So I'm looking at them. I guess this afternoon, 4.30, hosting Nashville to kick off the season. Yeah, well, here, let's just get to the lines for today, first and foremost. Predators at Lightning. Lightning are minus 151 home favorites. Preds plus 128. Then we've got, I mean, the marquee matchup tonight, the Penguins. On the outside, looking in the playoffs last year, acquiring Eric Carlson, his debut tonight for Pittsburgh. But all eyes are going to be on number 98, with the visitors, the Chicago Blackhawks, Connor Bedard's first game in the National Hockey League. Hawks are plus 200 to win. Penguins are minus 239. Connor Bedard to score, plus 162. I'm all over that. It would just seem too appropriate for Bedard to uh, to score. Uh, we've also got the Kraken and the Golden Knights playing. The banner will be raised at the Fortress. And then it's time to give the cup back after uh, we saw the Raiders uh, romping it around last hey, night at did the you see, uh, Legion um, Stadium. Just on Vegas, did you see their rings that they announced? These rings are getting They're crazier cool. Really cool. and crazier. So you pop the top off and it has an arena. It a pendant. You can put it, you can put it as a chain. Yeah, and then the, 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 the arena, the fortress Kay. is inside the ring. Here's the ring. I mean, these things get... So crazy. Maybe next time we have Gary on, he can show it off to us, Huss. Hopefully he can wear the top thing as a, maybe as a pendant. Look, yeah, it says it's nighttime, and what they have the rink there where they, and it marks the spots where they scored the seven goals in the, in the clinching game. That's <laughs> Absurd <amazing>. concept. <laughs> uh, Knights minus 162 faves tonight and plus 137 for the Kraken. Oh. Uh, if you if you always advance, yeah, sorry, just one thing. This is the second time the Jets are on a cup ring. They have the score of each series. I'm like four one. That's the first round when when they beat the Jets. the Jets. That the, one, what a game that one was. What, what a game, Dubois. We'll remember that forever. Yeah, that was the good Dubois, and then uh, invisible later on. But um, well, the uh, hey, listen, they earned it. They got the rings. They had the big party last night at the Legion Stadium while the Raiders actually beat the Packers with the cup in the house. Maybe some good vibes there. But give the cup back now. Everyone's tied for first place. Let's get on with the season tonight. Um, we do. There's some really cool exclusives um, for tonight's games. Um, if you want to just bet the chalk teams, the home teams to win, Lightning, Penguins, and Golden Knights, that's at plus 325. Uh, Eric Carlson to score and the Penguins to win in his Pittsburgh premier is plus 400. The one that I like that I jumped on, present in the future, Crosby and Bedard, both to score. 
plus 500. Um, and there's a bunch of other options. Hey, if you think Bedard can lead the team to a victory, 9-1 to one for Bedard, two points, and the Hawks to win. And um, also a good one. Uh, where was the one with the defense we were talking about in the lock shop? Oh, yeah, points from the point. Tyson Berry, Chris Letang, and Shea Theodore all to record a point, plus 650. Oh, you got some like Major that. League Baseball exclusives as well. And, uh, oh, the boys already have a college football uh, uh, a, uh, exclusive as well. Tomorrow, go back to the Cool Bet exclusives. I will put together a Winnipeg Sports Talk special exclusive, which will give us a nice number on. Kind of thinking on focusing out on the two big signees. Maybe Shifley to score, Hellebuck, I don't know, 25 or 30 saves, and Jets to win. We'll get a number on that, and that will be up there. And, of course, all our Lock Shop exclusives there as well. I hope you jumped on it last week because not to bury Horowitz myself, but I did go 4-0 against the spread and the ride with Hus Parlay did come through again. Uh, it was a very, very good week in the lock shop for yours truly. And let's hopefully keep that going into week one of the N uh, NHL season. But listen, I knew, knew we got to get out, but let's just quickly look at some futures for the Jets because you've got about 24 hours to get in on these. Um, we know what the team's looking like. We know the guys are signed. That hasn't changed the line at all. Totals for the season for the Winnipeg Jets over or under 94 and a half points. So if you think the Jets can get 95 or more, you take the over. If you think they'll be 94 or less, take the under. Uh, and of course, all teams in the NHL represented there. Uh, but let's get to goals. Some goal props. Who do we got here? We got Mark Shifley. Uh, we should have a Kyle Connor number as well. I think about um, 37. Let's, let's see. First of all, Josh Morrissey, 12 and a half. Kyle Connor, 37 and a half. And I believe Mark Shifley. Mark Shifley's 35 and a half. So the over on Shifley would be 36 or more. Kyle Connor, 38 or more. And Josh Morrissey, 13 or more on the overs. And uh, let's get uh, to player points for the Winnipeg Jets. I love the Morrissey number. Where is it here? Uh, do, do, do. Josh Morrissey, 56 and a half points is his total. Obviously got well into what he have 74 last year. Um, now, if you think that that was a one-year wonder, maybe stay away from this. If you think that Josh not only is the uh, most important defenseman on the club, playing power play, doing so much more, I don't mind the over. And it'll be a fun bet to uh, cheer for throughout the season. So Morrissey's point total, 56 and a half. Uh, Kyle Connor's point total for the season, 83 and a half. And Mark Shifley's points for the season, 75 and a half. BA, you can put that 40 bucks I'm sending you on in the over on Shifley. Uh, and again, folks, if you haven't played a cool bet before, use the promo code WST when you're making your first deposit. We'll hook you up with a 100% bonus up to 200 bucks on your first deposit got any leans on any of those ones uh yeah any nice overs that you're feeling i like mark shifley over points i think if he's healthy he's a point per game player um i don't kyle connor maybe leading i don't i picked shifley over on the goals too i think he could he had 40 last year what was it 35 and a half yeah if you have 42 I, last year 35 i like the over the looking at morrissey points he got 56 and a half just looking at um dom's Projections from the athletic. He's got fifty nine. Uh, so I mean, these are are pretty solid Dom, numbers. Dom, who famously called him a replacement level defenseman two years ago. He, he did. Uh, well, apparently, I don't know if you saw this today, but the models, um, the math models by Jay Fresh and Dom at the Athletic. Jay Fresh, I guess, on Twitter, Jay Fresh Hockey. Uh, they apparently love the Jets. So very high on the Jets. Uh, I think goaltending certainly does that, but the forward. Or depth. So, hey, I'm looking forward to the season. And uh, it's always fun to look at these totals. Uh, totals before. What's Eric Carlson? 76 points. Didn't he have like close to 100 last year? Yep. So, I mean, he's on a better team that should score more. Although, basically, the only thing San Jose did was play him 30 minutes a night just trying to get him points. Yeah. I well, mean, he hit 100 against the Winnipeg Jets. And it was like they'd won the cup. And, I mean, they uh, he was actually amazing in that game. Uh, that's an that's an interesting team. That is a really interesting about, team. Jack Hughes, ninety nine point five, and you were talking last week with uh, Wyshynski, Greg. 
about how New Jersey never had a 100-point score, which is crazy. And I think he could definitely hit that this year. Just looking at some top. How about Jonathan Drew? And what a season for him. He's getting top line in Colorado. I picked That's him what... last night in my fantasy draft. I kind of snuck him in there. Yeah, he's sitting there with uh, McKinnon and Rantanen. Yeah. Pretty nice spot to find himself in for this year. Definitely a nice little uh, free agent pickup if you're in a uh, in a league and uh, he wasn't selected last night. How about Jonathan Huberto? If you listen to Mike Kelly, he's got Cal. People are rolling their eyes in chat. Calgary as his, what, could finish first in the Pacific. And they were great two years ago. Yeah, he March. likes Calgary. He likes Calgary. Okay, how about Huberto? Over 73.5. He had that amazing season uh, two years ago and last year. The biggest fall off. So that, what, 73? Dom has uh, Huberto at 77. I like him to go over 73.5. I think he spoke recently to just how it was a very challenging year for him. Oh, yeah. I mean, moving from Florida to Calgary uh, in the trade, you know, signing that big contract, playing for a new coach, and the coach, you know, Daryl Sutter, then they fired him. I'm curious how Calgary is going to go. I mean, it's funny, you know, we talk how similar, and we'll talk more about Calgary tomorrow before the game, but uh, the Jets and Calgary have all these region questions. Well, the Jets just solved two of them with Shifley and Hellbuck, and now Calgary did sign Michael Backlund last week and gave him the C, but what happens with, what is it, Elias Lindholm? Upcoming, yeah, uh, upcoming UFA. That's a big one for them. I'm sure that'll be a big story when uh, we get to the rink tomorrow in Calgary. Uh, but again, it's all about tomorrow night's game. Connor Bedard, as we mentioned, makes his debut tonight. It's plus 162 for a goal tonight. His point total for the season is over 71 and a half. And as far as player goals, uh, Connor Bedard. Oh wow, that's actually gone up again. It was 32 and a half yesterday. It's 33 and a half right now. Looks like people are hammering the over on Connor Bedard. And uh, we mentioned the Jet totals. Uh, what What's our old pal Line looking at for goals this year? 32 Play center and a half. Line 32, 32 and a half. Is that, is that sticking? I haven't really been paying too much attention um, to uh, Columbus throughout the I preseason. I just knew that he, they were experimenting in there. Yeah, I saw some people say they look good in preseason. So. I mean, I mean, lines can change any day. And like, has he ever played center? I I found it interesting. And he talked talked a lot about defense. Like, he's not exactly known as a two way player. Line A, so C one, Line A with Johnny Gaudreau and Cole Sillinger to start the season. Yeah, that'll in- be interesting. I I really hope they do well. I I feel for that fan base. They've supported the team well. The team hasn't done anything for a long time. And obviously, I think a lot of people here, big fans of Pascal Vincent, um, kind of bizarre the way he got his opportunity to be a head coach in the NHL, but certainly hoping good things for him. Line A, and of course, Adam Fantilli, part of that uh, opening night lineup as well. Did see Leo Carlson's on the Ducks opening lineup. He was the number two overall pick, kind of the, the pick that shocked a lot of people that the Ducks went with him over Fantilli. He's wearing number 91, although I believe starting the season on the IR. Um, anyways, back to Cool Bet. Tomorrow, we'll uh, be doing Lock Shop from Calgary with some more picks for the NHL season right now. But um, got about 24 hours plus to get your Jets props in at Cool Bet before the puck drops tomorrow on the season. And, uh, oh, I guess, you know, the one thing we didn't do is check out what the uh, what the, the odds are to uh, to win the whole damn thing. Winner of the Cup, the favorites are the Edmonton Oilers, 8-1. to one. Avalanche, 8.5-1. to one. Canes, 9.5. The Jets are 60-1, to one, right there with the Canucks and the Islanders. Um, not bad. It might not be the year, but hey, you know, you want to throw a couple bucks on that. It'll be kind of fun. As far as the Central goes, the Avalanche plus one forty-five to win the division. Dallas plus one ninety-five. Wild seven to one, and then the Winnipeg Jets plus eight fifty. And uh, I'm looking for. Do we have a playoff? How about Vesna? Where's Hellebuck plus seven hundred? The awards. Ooh, I like that. I like that. Early um, awards props. I hear all these NFL guys saying, "Oh, awards props is the place where you can." Make money, but I mean, they're all plus 600 to Sturkin, Sorokin, Soros, then Hellbuck's plus 700, then Ottinger plus 1100, I think actually would be good. Yeah. 
good value. Probably some good Val. He'll certainly have the opportunity to do it. So there you go, gang. It's all up yeah. at Cool Bet. But uh, get your bets in before the puck drops on the season. Of course, tonight, three games starting off at yeah, 4.30, not too long from now. Nashville and Tampa, the uh, marquee game tonight, Bedard's debut, Chicago at Pittsburgh, Eric Carlson debuting as well for the Penguins, and then the late night game, raising the banner at the Fortress, the Vegas Golden Knights hosting the Seattle Kraken. Uh, wow, what a show today, Reem. Um, and again, if you missed the press conference earlier in full, um, just go to the YouTube channel. We talked about it for about five minutes and then kicked it over to um, to uh, Jets HQ for that. So it's all there on the YouTube channel as well. And uh, tomorrow, it's game day. And uh, I'm, I'm excited. I got to rip out of here right away to get to the airport. But uh, tomorrow, we'll be coming to you live from the Saddle Dome for a, a little WST road show before we drop the puck on the upcoming season. Yeah, wow, that sounds like a fun trip, Huss. And yeah, season opener, uh, big day of games tomorrow. So this should be fun. Finally, some real games, not preseason games, so we don't have to worry about it. But we didn't even talk about the lines today because they haven't haven't changed. But Ehlers practicing in full, and we'll get a look at you know at how it goes. Mm. Hey, by the way, oh, 297 likes. We still got almost 500 people in here. Give us a couple of thumbs up. Let's get to get to 300, folks. Or hell, 400 for all the people that haven't done it. I'm just looking at chat. Before we go, and I know today was all about the big signings and the start of the hockey season, and we got to that massive bomber win on Friday. Um, but a lot of people talking about the Blue Jays press conference. And by the way, when it comes to disastrous PR, um, Good on the Jays PR staff for scheduling that press conference for 11 o'clock on a Saturday morning on a long weekend. So it was well in the rear view by the time everything got back, although it's not. Um, but how about Atkins just driving the bus right over John Schneider? Apparently that was just a Schneider decision. He has the meetings all about him. Um, that being said, they're standing behind their guy and apparently just keeping the status quo going forward after... Uh, Another meltdown by the Jays in the uh, wild card. Yeah, we'll see what happens. And, and I know a lot of Jays fans upset at how uh, Lourdes Goriel and Gabriel Moreno are doing for the D-backs who are up 2-0. Oh, God, that trade is so bad. On the Dodgers. But, you know, Ross Atkins, yeah, Saturday of a long weekend, like at 11 a.m. Like, what a what a terrible time uh, for a press conference. And Mark Shapiro speaking Thursday. And yeah, he took zero accountability, zero responsibility for, you know, said, you know, blatantly lied to everyone, said he had, you know, it was, he was just as surprised as everyone when they took out uh, Jose Barrios, said it was John Schneider's decision. Those are John Schneider's meetings. Like nobody believed anything that he said. He looked like stupid. Like who wants to play for that guy? And it seems like the players didn't have buy-in to some of the moves they were doing. I mean, I don't know how anyone... You know, it seems like he's getting dragged by all media, including the ones uh, that work for ownership. Uh, so I'm curious, like, how they return the Ross Agnes because it's clear no one, no one likes him, and it doesn't seem like a good guy has taking zero accountability for their decision making and responsibility, and, and just blamed it all on John Schneider. But if it's, you know, it's all his fault and it didn't work out. I mean, they're still, hey, he's still their guy. They're still bringing him back. So uh, strange, Hess. Yeah, and then meanwhile, the Braves keep on rolling. Did you see the end, the ninth inning of that uh, Braves-Phillies game Ooh. last night? Oh, oh. baby, what, that's a great uh, series. What, one of the best endings to a playoff game you'll simply ever see. Almost a homer, caught at the wall, um, and then doubling up Bryce Harper, who was uh, on his way to home to tie the game. Of a big comeback from uh, the Braves. They were down 4 nothing, well into the game and uh, ended up coming back and winning 5-4. That series 1-1. And yes, Dodgers down 2 nothing to the D-backs. Um, further reminders of the Atkins Shapiro era and that big trade they made for Dalton Varsho, who, great defensive player, couldn't hit worth you-know-what. Uh, and yeah, Marino and Gurriel having a big, big part in that playoff run for the D-backs, who I was stunned they even made the playoffs. But uh, here they are right now, up 2 nothing on the L.A. Dodgers. All right, great stuff today. Thanks to Mike McIntyre. Thanks to Jeff Hamilton and, of course, Mike Kelly. Tomorrow, we'll fire it up from the Saddle Dome in Calgary before first 
puck drop in the first game of the season for the Winnipeg Jets. Um, we'll uh, be there for the morning skates in the AM. We'll have everything for you. I believe uh, Weaver is going to jump up and join me live there. So uh, it's going to be a fun, fun 48 hours, kind of a whirlwind. But uh, looking forward to banging out the show tomorrow from Calgary and being in the building tomorrow with our old pal Rick Ralph at the game on uh, on Wednesday on Wednesday night, tomorrow night. Um, thanks to everyone. Uh, welcome to all the newcomers that uh, maybe just found us today. Hit that sub button if you haven't already. And uh, we'll see you tomorrow, 1 p.m. Winnipeg time, live from the Dome before game number one of 82 for your Winnipeg Jets. Thanks again to the sponsors that make this happen. Thanks to everyone for 10,000 subs on Friday. And we'll see you tomorrow on Winnipeg Sports Talk. Get ready for puck drop on WST. Oh, my God. Oh! Shut it down. Let's go home. Thanks for tuning in to Winnipeg Sports Talk Daily. Make sure to subscribe on YouTube and your favorite podcast feed at winnipegsportstalk.com.